everybody and welcome back to another amazing week of the KCM. We've got a great lineup here today, some surprises. And we're going to be starting off with Hero versus Tielbo, aka YSC. Nice ZVP to start things off. Um, lineup's a little bit funky this week. We've got some great players on both the Terran and Zerg squad, but it feels like Protoss is bringing out the B, B team, maybe even the, the E team in this <laughs> week. So I don't know. What do you think about this one? Yeah, it looks like um, Stork's going to have to be doing a lot of uh, heavy lifting, it seems. Uh, we got Tielbo YSC. He's an okay player. Uh, not too sure if he's up to the same kind of caliber as these other guys, though, so he's going to maybe have a hard time of it. Backhoe kind of sounds like a prostitute that specializes in uh, anal or something, so not too sure how well he's going to fare. Whereas we've got Light, Royal, and Speed, which have all been playing pretty good recently. And Action Jadong Hero on the other side of the, the, the Protoss squad as well. So, yeah, both squads looking really fierce. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'm, I'm feeling like I'm leaning a little bit more towards the Zerg squad rather than the Terran squad so far, but we'll have to see. Yeah, we haven't seen Bako for a really long time. Um, his alter ego, actually his alternate ID, according to Wikipedia, is Jesus. Just, just <laughs> Jesus. So, uh, I did a little research on that guy and uh, he has quite a bit of controversy around him. Apparently, he is the reason for some of the rulings uh, about... You know, typing in chat uh, during the Kespa era, he typed a few things um, that weren't allowed and almost got disqualified. And after that, they changed the rules so you can only type PP or GG. Those are the only things that are actually allowed to be typed uh, in game. Yeah. Otherwise, you just get an instant di disqualification. Would be a pretty painful way to lose um, you know, a really big, important game by accidentally typing something wrong. Oh yeah, I mean there was like heart attacks that you would have back in the Kesper days because the rules were actually quite stringent with this stuff. I mean, I, I think I remember some players like being a little bit nervous if they accidentally typed PPP instead of just PP which is for you know, please pause when you need to pause the game to announce to the referees that there's something wrong that needs your attention. Yeah, just something as small as that, guys, could actually lose you the entire game. Uh, and it, the entire series is a straight disqualification from the entire tournament. So, yeah, Kespa did not mess around at that time. They were a pretty a scary force to be reckoned with. Um, but I think Africa TV is nearly as stringent. And, ooh, just getting that third base down. It's pretty normal opener here for Hero. Opening with a overpool and producing a few links to try and put some pressure onto YSC. Any player who's uh, stronger a Zerg than their Protoss opponent is definitely going to want to do stuff like this because you're bound to make mistakes as the Protoss uh, with these early game gateway openers and just getting a one ling or two lings into the main could net you an insane advantage if you're that much faster than your opponent. Yeah, and it's, it can be just, uh, a, a small thing that spirals out of control for the Protoss, especially if you're not um, comfortable, like, you know, doing a lot of task switching. Also, it does catch that probe scout before it sneaks in as well. So here are already pretty in a commanding position right now. It doesn't know how many Zerglings in addition to this are being made right now. Has a couple of Zelts running out onto the map, maybe looking towards that third, third base to see if they can put on some pressure and buy a bit of time to maybe get a forge down and, you know, resecure the natural again, but was a little bit annoying there for uh, YC in the early game so far. Yeah, he's going to send his zealots back home. He's a little bit worried that they're just going to get picked off uh, at low cost here for Hero. So he wants to bring those back. He can have a bit of a better, stronger mid-game push if he doesn't lose those early zealots. But Hero hasn't been forced into making a lot of links. He's been uh, pretty calm here and dealing with this gateway expansion with just a bare minimum number of links is going to be a boon to his economy overall. Uh, I think this is something you talk about a lot in our cast and uh, when we talk about Zerg versus Protoss and uh, the advantages that can be gained by being stronger than your opponent is just forcing more and more interactions yeah. between the two players and 
forcing the the other person to act on more fronts to task switch between different locations controlling different units uh, if you're just right. a, if you're just outright better than your opponent you know going in with links like that and you know hitting buildings and uh, running around and attacking different units opens up opportunities maybe YSC would never lose that probe but because he was dealing with other things on the map he ends up walking into a trap and gets sniped that's a big advantage and Hero's going to be looking for those type of advantages throughout this game yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you're, you're essentially asking questions of your opponent and he has to have the right answers or he's in trouble. And, you know, if you're not as strong of a player, sometimes you'll make the wrong call as well. And you'll maybe, you know, go down the wrong direction on the behavior tree. And you might just be dead because you did one little thing wrong because you didn't know how to, you know, react perfectly to this one interaction that comes your way. And you'll see a lot of the stronger guys try and force those issues a lot where they just try and put you into an uncomfortable position, at the very least to throw off the optimization of your builds. And because you're not quite as experienced at multitasking and like navigating those weird decision trees because you haven't played like quite as many games in those weird positions you end up uh, you know on the worst end of the stick of things and someone like hero he's very comfortable at navigating weird situations hero's going to be dictating the pace of this game i think he's throwing down a third gas already here shun and that's going to be likely for a large number of mutas coming out really early on a ton of scourge are going to be produced as well and mm. it's going to want to fight ysc in the air it feel it feels like um a third cannon yeah. was produced here by ysc a prudent maneuver since he wasn't you know out on the map with those zealots and figuring out what's actually coming from hero he starts that cannon and then cancels it a little bit later but these uh corsairs are in danger it's that uh that meme that's that simpsons meme i'm in danger right now these two <laughs> corsairs on the bus getting picked off one goes down the other takes some damage from the one scourge and will manage to make it back home but that is really painful when we know yeah. that hero is going for this build and actually ysc doesn't have confirmation over that third gas he didn't see the third gas and he might be caught completely off guard here by this you know wave of scourge that's about to come out yeah i think so i think we might have a, a bit of a full-on like ogre zerg moment here yeah he's, he's gonna start making some entrenched sunken colonies just to be a little bit safer against counter attacks while he does this he's gonna probably go up to about 10 or so mutilisks at the bare minimum and then just flood a wall of scourge behind that as well and uh this could be a, a bit of a world of hurtful way to have to try and navigate especially losing the first corsair like that he's gonna be a while before he has like a potent stack of like six corsairs with plus one that he can start gunning down the scourge and with the mutilisks already in high number there we can see nine already they're also going to make very short work of these zealots uh, cleaning those up pop for file five so yeah i don't know if I, I like this position for ysc i think this can go pretty wrong he's seen a couple of drones here though it's not too bad he's forcing a, a pull off the drone line and denying a lot so he's allowing some mining time getting a drone here or there this is not too bad of damage but i still worry for him in the coming phases of how he's going to deal with this massive flood of ogre zerg yeah this is going to get really scary you can see a DT is out on the map, and that means that there's less gas at home for Corsairs and Templar that should be making an Archon right now. He's making two cannons in his main mineral line. That's how serious he's taking it. I'm not sure that they're going to be done in time, and even if they're done, the uh, Mutas can tank those uh, shots from the cannons and look at this he's just gonna chase this down he's catching it in the corner here oh man ysc tried to stick around and actually fight somewhat but he ends up losing too many corsairs and he just doesn't have enough to fight this there he goes <sighs> catching it on the retreat and hero takes over the main base this is just about all she wrote there's almost no way to get oh he does have an archon wait that's uh, that's kind of important having the archon here yeah. might allow him to push things out of the main and if he takes control of his main once again maybe he has a shot but it's a long shot here after all that damage yeah it's a very big long shot and, and hero's like hitting beats back at home with his macro as well he's currently 15 supply ahead and rising and will be pumping out a lot of units even if this attack doesn't finish him off he might just better out macro him anyway and just like flood in so many hydras but right now did a pretty good job of na navigating around this archon but does take a couple of sonic shockwave blasts from that um archon losing quite a, a lot of his scourge now just down to one 
Uh, the Corsair pretty much just gets deleted though. GG finally calls from YSC. He wants the tap out. I can hardly say I blame them. I'm not sure what Terran we're going to get out of uh, Lightspeed and Royal to deal with Hero next, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like the Zerg squad's going to be doing well this week, Sam. Okay, game number two. It's time for Royal to hit the stage. We're going into this match on Deja Vu. We are just talking in the break there about the, the Protoss lineup again. I know a lot of you guys are going to be uh, in the comments wondering why we've got two kind of B-teamers here in both Backhoe and YSC. And I really can't explain it. It must be the Protoss uh, out driving their Lamborghinis and, uh, you know, hanging out on the beach. I mean, I think Snow had a kid recently. Maybe true, that's one true. reason, but... And the scheduling issues maybe a little bit from SSL, but I don't know. This could be a few reasons why they haven't got anyone else to show up, but it's a bit of a shame. We haven't seen rain in the KCM for a long time. Um, and I don't think Mini has can't play any PvP, kids. man. <laughs> you can't play <laughs> PvP, yeah. yeah. Well, it's good practice for the other matchups. Sure, he'll need it if he wants to win another season, but he should definitely play in KCM. Yeah, I would like to see him. Sure. There. Yeah, I mean, I think he just makes too much money doing uh, live streaming. Yeah, so. I think so. Yeah, he plays StarCraft less than the other pros do. Like he's playing a lot of other games or doing a lot of other stuff, right? Yeah, he plays. I think the least out of any SSL level yeah. player. Yes, he does. It doesn't really show in his gameplay, but, uh, unless he's like way off. Sometimes he's, you know, just completely out of practice and he really gets stomped. But if he's put in any practice at all, he seems to, he looks like he's been practicing all the time, but he's not, right. <laughs> he's definitely not. Yeah, he definitely seems to have like a different level of understanding of the game on a fundamental level, similar to how Flash does, just seems to like, you know, understand the game a bit more intuitively on a, in a level that other players aren't quite figuring out and it's kind of weird that he can play that good with such little time invested would be would, would like to see him in kcm and see him just a tiny bit more active even if he's still not playing you know as much as these other guys yeah for sure uh, would be nice to have literally any other protos player actually Bisu, anybody i don't know where these guys best. are at but yeah best i don't know what he's doing Mini, Snow, yeah. where are you guys at? Not sure, but uh, we're going to be... Yeah, we're going to be watching um, probably some Zerg domination, maybe some Terrans uh, taking some points this week. Uh, unless Stork just goes god mode again. So I, I feel like it, it seems unlikely. I mean, how many times can he pull off a, an all kill like that? It's, it's hard, yeah. To, to, to do that kind of thing consistently is, is very unheard of. I mean, it's hard to, to kill that many players in a row. Anyway, just one time, just one time. Doing that like two, three times in a short span, like nah. Like, you're probably not going to happen. It's possible, but it's very unlikely. Like, like, like it's, it's as likely as getting stabbed by a squirrel. I mean, your chances, you know, technically <laughs> won't probably happen, but your chances aren't zero either. You know, there's squirrels out there that have gotten their, their, their mitts on a knife, you know what I mean? <laughs> Well, getting into this game, we have Royal opening with a pretty standard two racks. He's going to be putting on quite a bit of pressure here. It's not the fastest stim rush, but he's going to have that five minute timing to start to move out and maybe put some pressure on. I mean, it's not the greatest position to do this because we are cross map. Um, but he could put on a little bit of pressure here. Hero, on the other hand, went for a little bit of a later gas and yeah. got a 2.5 hatch uh, with the macro hatch quite a bit earlier than most 2.5 hatches we see. Most 2.5 hatches is uh, the hatchery either just before the spire or just after. But here yeah. he threw it down quite quickly and his mutas will be delayed slightly. Uh, he's probably going to still hit a pretty decent timing here. He hasn't been forced to build a huge amount of defenses or anything. Just a few lings out on the map circling around looking for this SCV. He finds it. 
in the top right hand corner so really diligent play here by hero you can see how many hours and how much practice he's been putting into his play lately as he's yeah. he's just firing on all cylinders here spreading all over the place it takes a lot of apm but he's got that in spades right yeah he's he's the kind of guy that's kind of fascinating to look at when he's dialed in like not many of the pros can get as locked in as someone like like hero or flash or some of these other top guys and all pro players can lock in on a certain level but you you notice much more like saying like snow's play like can seem a bit shaky sometimes he doesn't always seem locked in right he's not as consistently locked in as you would you'd like him to be whereas like players like hero they almost seem not alien but almost like an artificial intelligence like very consistently just dialed into the game state yeah i can i get that feeling for sure you're rarely making any mistakes is gonna have a good timing here with the mutas popping out at six minutes big group heading across the map he's gonna hit that a seven eight count where things get really scary the economic damage can be massive if it's left unattended. Not really a big move out timing for Royal. He's going to be standing out here in the front. Uh, it's kind of a pressure play. As the Mutas go in, if uh, they you know don't pull out right away, then there's a possibility he can walk across the map and get uh, to threaten the natural. So this is working out pretty nice for royal he's buying that time he only lost like one or two scvs and hero really has to track this now doesn't have a choice yeah. but behind this royal has you know three racks production he's going to be building a lot of more marines and eventually reinforcing this push you can see he's just slowly backing up here taking it inch by inch getting closer and closer to the natural so that he can have a, a better uh, reinforcement and going into his factory I, I think this is pretty well perfect play from royal uh, let's see what he does yeah. with his transition though yeah i like how he's uh, royal's playing um what we see royal doing right now is um just putting out a lot of pressure onto the map uh, threatening a counter attack so even if these muas did want to just go in for a swipe at the SEVs, he could really heavily punish that and you have to respect that as hero like we see him wanting to do a dive into the main base now he might get on top of the production a little bit uh, there are two turrets that are Look at this pre-repair! Look at that pre-repair from Royal. He's really on top of it. Like he, he, there's no way that Hero can really come in here and break open this position if he's reacting that fast. It does come and rotate around and pick off some of these infantry units, like coming out of these barracks, which aren't too well protected by these turrets on the left-hand side. But it looks like this Marine force is going to be making its way into the top right quadrant. It's going to be taking out this hatchery more or less for free, and it's retreating with like the other half of the force. So it's going to come down to whether or not he can like muster a good enough defense of these uh, reinforcing Marines around on the map but i'm not, not sure if he brought enough of his army back home this is uh, a little bit crazy from hero he wanted to force this fight by building a huge amount of sunken colonies in the natural he made it uh, kind of impossible for the marine medic to break into his natural but it it allows the terran to just take out the third base and so he's kind of all in right now in a weird way he's breaking this marine medic that's trying to come up the ramp and the marines coming back across the map might get caught by a bunch of lings and mutas that are being reinforced out here if he just holds the top oh he's gonna run in with the lings this could be a killing blow here he's gonna get on top of the marines and start to hit these turrets these returning marines are super important if they manage to come in uh, and push the mutalists back there's only six mutas mind you that's not a huge amount like five can one hatch or one hit, hit kill a marine but they're not going to be doing it very efficiently and here we go he's really getting these out of his main and he might just barely be able to stabilize here, Shun. It's so, so close, but these yeah. mutas are very low and the turrets are just about done. He's lost a lot, but Hero's lost his third base, and I don't know if that's an acceptable loss here. I mean, yeah, he's got a few more mutas coming across now. Uh, he hasn't got very many right this second, just six, but there's another like four that are currently in route. So that'll, you know, bring him up to a good 10, 11 soon. So he can keep the pressure on uh, Royal right now, but Royal has weathered the the initial storm and once he starts to stabilize more and more this does kind of put hero on a bit of a clock now uh, to actually try and make something happen of this uh, otherwise
these vessels will eventually be out and then we've got a radiate and the game will escalate from there without a third gas. Um, Hero looks like he might be considering doing some kind of two-base guardian build or something. Or maybe a, a try and contain with the Muirs into Defiler, but I'm not too sure that's a good idea. I don't know. This is, of course, Monday morning quarterbacking, but the, all the sunkins made at the natural um that used up a lot of hero's money a lot of his um, m minerals were gone at the moment when he needed to be making mutas he had like a glut of about 500 or so gas during that attack he just couldn't make uh the extra mutas so i wonder if there was a, a mistake made by him of course he needs those sunken colonies to make sure that royal doesn't break him in his natural but does he need them all to be finished maybe he could have left you know two or three of them in the the creep colony form just to squeeze out those few extra mutas to make this work i know that's uh that's a nitpick there but this is just such a razor's edge that last fight there uh had he been able to stop those marines coming up the ramp with a few extra mutas he would have actually won the right. game right then and there but now he's in such a, a rough position with the powering here from Royal and all of the turrets that have come up. He's just got to go all in. He has no choice. He's going to make a bunch of lurkers and try to break the front. It's, if the situation could have been avoided at all, what do you think, Shun? Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure. I mean, I, I kind of see what Hero was going for with this. I think maybe just slight miscalculations, but it looked like he was so close to you know closing out the game and he just assumed that the game would be a much more base trade scenario and maybe overly invested a little bit too much in those sunken colonies and what have you uh, he has usually got phenomenal uh, mutilus micro which we've seen here um hasn't quite been enough to dominate uh, the likes of Royal, though, he's really been holding his own in this game and really on top of things with the pre-repairs on the turrets as well. Getting on top of them with these lurkers could be huge, though. He's getting right on top of them with the Ling support. Here, Royal needs to be very careful right now. This game could end in a heartbeat if he makes one small misstep with this bio squad. So far, doing a good job of uh, mitigating too much disaster here. Rotating around onto the right-hand side, threatening a run by out onto the map and maybe catching the lurkers when they shuffle around. He needs to stay as active as possible, keeping these lurkers back away from his front. He does not want to allow uh, the lurkers to contain him in the choke point because just four or five lurkers in that choke point is deaf for a Terran to break out of. But once you're out, you know, slightly in a wider area, the lurkers are not quite as effective anymore. So you want to keep the Zerg back as much as possible, as well as preventing the potential defiler checkmate move later on. So Royal needs to be super active right now. That was an insanely good irradiate, by the way, Shun. That did so much damage to the mutas. They can hardly do anything at this point. They're very low in number, and he's got a small pair of Scourge. That's like the Hope Scourge, really. That, that's the that's the Hail Mary pair of Scourge right there. If you can just snipe a Vessel or two, maybe you can find a way back in this game, because as that Vessel number increases, you know, we get four Vessels and then six, and six Irradiates kills everything you can make on two bases. You're just yep. never going to be able to make enough units to break in. Even if you have Defiler coming across, he just irradiates every Lurker and makes Fire Bats. And you just will not, you will not make it right. through the natural. It's it's not a possibility. Not against someone the quality of Royal, that's for sure. So uh, we have to snipe a Vessel. We have to snipe Vessels here. It's just not going to work. And well, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, he needs to do something to make up the gas deficit that he's currently facing. It's almost 14 minutes into the game and he's still waiting to get this third gas online. It's kind of pitiful, but he's doing a great job with the tools he's got available to him. So far, so good. He's he's only a little bit lagging behind the curve of the, the game relative to what he maybe should be at, but he comes a big pounce from Royal trying to get up his lurkers. Tries to knock it down. Not, not able to do so, though. One of the vessels gets sniped, so pretty good hold here from Hero. Going to maintain this high ground position about pretty much any losses, so kind of resetting the game state a little bit there, kind of giving a bit more comfort back to Hero again. We're going to have three more Radiates here in a moment, though, and plus two is already done, Shun. Plus two plus one Oof. on these Marines is disgusting. They have so much damage, and they're not going to be two-shot by these Lurkers either, so it's 
such an uphill battle here for Hero, and there's those three irradiates I was talking about a moment ago. Plus one armor actually did finish, so that's actually quite a big boon here for Hero. Fighting up high ground, fighting up this ramp is a little bit rough for Royal, and he's preventing these Marines from moving out on the map and creating a problem for him and getting around and cutting off his reinforcements and such. So uh, those are good things going for Hero right now. It's just the number of gas units is really low <laughs> this lurker stuck in the middle is hilarious and the vessel count is getting way too high that's five vessels he can kill five lurkers i don't think he can make you know lurkers even to replace the number he's gotten not to mention actually grow the number right. that he has yeah i mean right now he wants to just try and see if he can set up a position where he can you know push the terran into a, a, where uh, and all the way back into his natural but he's not able to do it like royal's been super active at like staying as wide as possible with his Ooh. army movements finally plague is done actually so getting a beat a pretty beautiful plague on that clump of bow units if he can get another chain plague onto those clump of vessels and maybe you know get a mutilisk or a hydralisk or something to snipe them. This good game could still turn around for Hero. It's still a Ooh. bit of an uphill battle. Oh, look at that beautiful plank! That's what we need to see. And now he's coming into this pocket with a borrowed lurker underneath the Dark Swarm, cutting off the force of reinforcement and retreat for this bio force. He can now try and isolate this bio ball on the right hand side to see if he can squeeze more value out of these units. Dude, I was not feeling the the plague there on the Marines, but once you get that plague on these vessels, here we go, diving on top of them. He's gonna get so many vessels. He doesn't throw away the mutas to just get those last two. Maybe uh, you know, might have been worth it. Just you know, jump on top of that. Another plague comes up, but it's on the two the only two vessels that are already been plagued. Here comes some scourge as well. Hardly even necessary at this point, but um, throwing them in there might be able to get something. Oh, gets both the last two vessels. There we go. Only one irradiate remaining. Hero can do this. Yeah, he can definitely do this. He's done a great job of turning this game around. Look at this massive flood of bats coming out of the barracks now. He knows that he needs to have some kind of tool available to him to break under Dark Swarm. When it's just one or two lurkers in a Dark Swarm, you know, a round of fire bats can actually break through that. So now this gives a little bit of a... <gasps> Blake was insane though. I'm not sure if um, Royal can handle this. Like he's just getting chewed up all of a sudden. Like Hero, like we were saying earlier, can just navigate these awkward situations with some finesse. Now going back in with another group of units, throwing down Dark Swarm, seeing if he can drive a wedge between these two forces once again. Bats just trying to pounce on top of those lurkers, but some link support coming in behind gonna interrupt their targeting a little bit, make it very difficult to clean up the remainder of the lurkers. It's just one or two fire bats barely finishing off the lurkers in time, but more lurkers are now able to get underneath the Dark Swarm and re um, accomplish the same goal anyway. So Hero still making a big run for this, but some Marines are killing off Overlords and it is getting a little bit weird of a game here. I'm not sure if Hero's got like enough mass of units to really have control of the game right now, but he's, so far he's doing a pretty good job utilizing his tools. Oh, oh boy, he's gonna lose about four, <laughs> four defilers underneath that Dark Swarm. That's kind of crazy. I don't know where he got the gas for that. I guess the third gas was finally kicking in here. Some units making their way over to the top right hand corner. Just pure Marine could be stopped by just one player plague and a few hydras but uh, we'll see if he manages to get something up there to deal with this kind of bust out here by royal that was a crazy fight by the way that f that fight we saw with just mass fire bats against you know five lurkers under dark swarm the the deficit in the overall oh my god the scvs wait a second so many scvs are running through this none of them die somehow but I mean, all he needs okay. to do is rotate the, the lurkers over a little bit and he should be able to break that. Oh, the Marines came back home. Oh, and a bunch of Marines died over here on the left side as well. I think things are starting to fall apart here for Royal. He's replenished his vessel count quite uh, health to a healthy number, but is he going to be able to keep them alive? Scourge are coming through. We're going to have Plague on top of some some of this stuff here pretty soon. A lot of these SCVs are going to go down. Wow. Army making its way over here to the top right, but there's Lurkers on the high ground. I feel like Hero has an answer for everything in the moment yeah. that... It seems like Royal is going to stabilize and start to get out on the map. Hero finds another way in, another plague, another little push with the Dark Swarm to make things scrappy once again and punish Royal for being out of position, even just slightly. 
Yeah, a hero is, is somehow able to navigate the, the most darkest of waters, it seems, with without a compass, like, no lanterns are lit, he's just, like, rudderless sailing through the abyss and still somehow manages to show up to your party on time. I don't know how he does it, but he still manages it. I mean, the vessel count is still, like, somewhat sizable, but now that it's been, like, plagued non-stop and been reduced, it's much more difficult to churn out the irradiates. He's finally gotten the CC set up at the right-hand side, but he's not able to mine from it really at all yet. He's now finally got another SCV train coming over here, but now there's Lurkers back again. Oh man, this second <laughs> SCV train getting absolutely destroyed. These Marines on the high ground just wandering into Lurker Spines. Some more Lurkers are going to pop out here. Looks like this is not going to trade well, but some Hydra's coming in, clearing out the vessel count. I don't know how many vessels just went down there. I think we just caught the tail end of about four or five vessels falling at the same time and there's royal with no money left in the natural it is so bad another huge plague here hero just completely finessing royal in this game this is so impressive yeah. it's very impressive because like there's a lot of moments where like hero was almost falling apart where he had like hardly any tools left like and now he's just barely got enough economy where he can like just churn out a massive amount of hydras to kind of finish the job here they're finally going to be tapping out. GG is called. Wow, I'm pretty impressed by Hero. This is a very difficult game for Hero to win. Like, he, he assumed there would be some kind of weird base trade scenario, but it wasn't at all. And he kind of, like, sacrifices third base essentially for nothing and somehow still managed to recover. That's almost unheard of. Most Zergs are GGing out when they lose their third guess like that. I've seen so many Zergs try what Hero just did. And completely fail and i've personally uh, tried the same yeah. thing like doing the base trade it doesn't work you lose your third you just try to okay let's just wing it you know lurkers into defiler try to make it happen he did such a good job of containing on the high ground i, I feel like this is a unique situation for a very unique map don't you think like the fact that he was able to sit on high ground and just hold that area and stop the the breakouts the the way that you kill that and stop that from working is you get to the other side of the army and stop the rallies that is the real killing blow for a push like what we saw out of hero um and he just wasn't able to get around he wasn't able to get out no. and the plagues came through i don't know how he managed to sneak all those upgrades out it's so expensive like 300 gas worth of just pure upgrades to get the the, the defiler to that point where he can start spending plagues and he somehow snuck that out while containing Royal with 2-1. It's just insane. I, I really... Yeah. It's inexplicable. Literally any other Zerg is dead there. Literally any other uh, Zerg yeah. is dead there. Anyone. I mean, even Sulky would have an extremely hard time making that work and probably would have fallen apart, but somehow Hero makes it happen. I bet that Royal is, is kicking himself right now, dude. That was a one game for sure. Hero going to continue on now, going up against Backho, aka Jesus, over here in the top left. Monty Hall. Maybe there's a chance Backho can pull something sneaky out <laughs> jesus can uh walk on water today managed to beat hero i don't know hero is just looking so sharp yeah like scary sharp <laughs> like I, we were just saying um off air a little bit like um I, I think this guy is only a matter of time before he finally gets his championship and he's already always been like a kind of round of four round of eight player always super consistent at smashing through into the higher echelons of the tournaments but never quite getting that number one champion belt but maybe that will change soon. Look at this uh, play from Backhoe, though. Being super aggressive. Just going to be doing a 9-9 gate rush and probably um, putting a lot of pressure on Tahiro. Uh, if, he, if he scouts it, this will be okay. But if he doesn't scout it, this could be a real big problem for Hero. Oh, my. Dude. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, hero. We He's not even sending his overlord. overlord. <laughs> oh my gosh. Please tell me you're sending your... Oh my gosh. Oh, the vector on this overlord is not looking good here, Shun. No, uh, this, is, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is... 
This is such a obvious Protoss build. Do they they do this all the yeah. time on ladder, of course. Uh, you gotta check your mineral patches. You've gotta you gotta have vision on everything. Uh, all the entrances to your base. Um, I mean, I'm just I'm shocked that Hero's not looking at this. He's building a a spawning pool, but. It's actually not double gate, it's just one gate, which might be yeah. holdable. Yeah, it's holdable, it's just awkward as anything. The Zealot finish is so quick that he will probably get at least one or two drones and maybe quite a bit of lost mining time, even if he doesn't lose too many drones. And this, it, notice how Hero hasn't yet mined out any of these patches, so he can't actually do drills to escape and go mine at his natural if the pressure becomes too much. So this could get out of hand very quickly. Oh, what is Hero doing? He's not even microing yet. Okay, he's going to start to pull the drones. There are scenarios where the drones get on top of the Zealot and force it to yeah. dance, and you can actually take no damage, but that is a really tough thing to pull off, and he's already taken some damage on these drones. I don't know if he's going to end up losing a whole bunch, but he's producing six lings. He just needs to buy time. No drones have died so far. He starts a, a a sunken here, I think. Okay, he gets on top of the the uh, zealots, and he hasn't taken any losses yet. He gets a surround on this, and he's shooting over the lings with the drones. This is pretty good hold so far by Hero. He might just take no damage. This is kind of insane. Yeah, yeah he also, um, uh, Bako, like, put a pylon down to block off the mineral from being mined out. Uh, this is, like, very interesting game from both of these players so far. This could translate into a very interesting finish. Um, I think there's just barely enough zealots that this attack might continue, but he, with the sunken, he has to be much more tactical about this, so I think the game's gonna slow down, and in a weird way, now Bako kind of wishes this was mined out because then he could put on pressure onto this natural hatchery so in a way this is working in hero's advantage now that this hasn't been exposed this natural expansion of his yeah this is a weird situation for sure he has no mineral in his uh, for his probe so he could mine that but he has to kill his own pylon to make that work uh he's gonna lose one zealot okay that's bad he just lost one zealot for free over there um, and now the zealot's gonna pop out and maybe get surrounded. Okay, he keeps it alive, but the zealot number's not really growing. He's he's keeping it in check, and his ling number's getting out of control. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm curious what, what hero's plan is gonna be from here on. Because he has to get something to do with these Corsairs. Like, I'm, is he gonna try and do some kind of two-hatch hydro play? Yeah, two-hatch hydro makes sense. Like... We need to do something here. I'm curious if he wants to be aggressive with this or just purely posture defensively and go into lair and spire from here. Um, I think either are fine. Uh, the main thing is just making sure he nails his execution with mitigating any damage that's going to be coming out of a backhoe in the coming minutes. So I think that Hero can actually mine that one mineral patch with the drone on the other side and yeah. then just floodlings from the, the top side and surround this, but it feels like he's he doesn't really want to do that. Yo, he's, he's, he's going to have to kill his own pylon <laughs> so he can mine that and get into the, the natural, but every time he, he moves to do that, lings come forward and start at the gate, gateway, and he can't be losing the gateway. He's kind of tied himself up into like a Chinese finger trap here. His thumbs yeah. are stuck together and he can't really go in either direction. Um, this is a, yeah, this is a conundrum of his own making though. And I, I feel like Hero is just gonna dance around him and probably end up taking this game. This is this is a rough situation for our, our Brodos player. He's gonna lose his gateway for sure now that Hydras are out. Yeah, it's only a matter of time. Uh, and he won't have speed on these zealots for an exceptionally long time relative mm -hmm. to right now. So eventually, yeah, he's gonna lose that gateway, lose those zealots. And it's gonna be a bit unfortunate for him. There was a little bit of a window where something could have been done, but I, I think he kind of played himself a little bit with that pylon. I mean, it just kind of negated a lot of his options and 
and kind of made things a little bit more simplified for Hero. Tries to go in, in there, but Hero's just ready for the full surround. The second he tries to do anything, Hero's always got just barely the, the right calculated amount of units to completely overwhelm you. And uh, yeah, as you can see, even though there's not that many Hydras right now, there's just barely enough Zerglings to soak for these. But the problem is, now that the Sairs are coming in, the Hydras have to decide, do I, do I, do I finish killing these or do I go and clear, clear up these um, from killing my Overlords? So you have to make sure you balance and switch up so you've got a couple of Hydras kill, keeping those Corsairs off of your Overlords while you're also microing against these Zealots. So there's another opportunity for um, Backhoe to come in here and try and do some damage. So far, uh, Hero's been doing a good job, but now the Zealots are finally in the natural expansion. He's still not able to get them. I, this is crazy from Hero. Like He's kind of like not really made any significant mistakes. Dude, that Hydra was like a ballerina, man. He was just <laughs> running around uh, like a gymnast yeah. there, flipping over that zealot and with no HP remaining, manages to stay alive. Just the jukes and dodges there from Hero are insane. He is on another level today. Really giving us yeah, some really amazing is. games and uh, proving that he is more than capable of just manhandling you know, mid-tier Protoss. These guys, this guy, uh, I mean, everything went right with this rush for Bako. There was like a golden opportunity, a gift from the gods to Bako himself. Jesus himself wouldn't have gotten a better, you know, roll of the dice from God in this situation. He manages to not right. scout that and here we are now in probably the worst situation possible because the execution from Hero is just too good. Yeah, I mean, he's even, like, putting a decent amount of damage down onto these Corsairs when they come on their first flyby. So, I mean, if he's going to be this on top of things, I'm, I'm trying to wonder how can Backhoe come into this game again? I mean, it has to be something maybe a bit extreme. I don't think he has the confidence to do something like Reva Sair or anything like that. So I'm not really sure what his options are going to be. He might just have to try and play, like, a relatively straight-up game here. Maybe... Maybe he, what would be good is if he could try and bait Hero into going um, Mutalisks and then setting up for a Maelstrom combo. That would be one of the ways I could see him getting a big enough tempo swing in this game. Yeah, it, the real problem right now for Bako is that uh, although he's on kind of a semi-island map, right now there's not a good way for a hero to attack his natural or his main it's not that hard like we can just send some some drones over here and mine that and we can then get to get to work attacking that uh that natural base now killing off the overlord here and going to work with the dark templar if he doesn't notice this right away okay three drones four drones that's some reasonable damage here this is one of those ways that he can get back into the game, I guess. I wasn't considering that maybe Hero would, you know, have a, a lack of Hydras at one of his bases and only one Overlord to, to get sniped. That seems like no. something that he would be on top of, but he does end up taking a bit of economic damage. It's just, is it really enough here to mitigate a, a potential attack from Hero and the, the damage he's taken so far? Oof, and yeah, losing in Corsair as well. Um, there's a potential I mean, for that Mutalus switch pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, he's starting to add some ingredients into a bowl. Whether or not he can finish baking the cake with that remains to be seen. But, yeah, I certainly am favoring Hero's position right now, despite, um... Uh, Backhoe finding a little bit of economic damage there. He's trying to set up his third base at the 9 o'clock. Can't really fault him for it, but he needs to start finding some other kind of value and tempo swing in this game, because the, uh, Hero's such a powerful macro zerg. Like, he can, he plays pretty much any style, but if you just let him sit back and do what he wants to do, it gets crazy the amount of units he can pour out of his zerg macro engine. And it looks like he's just going to rush up into four base, go up to like 7 to 9 hatchery, production and just absolutely demolish um Batco. if Batco can't f like figure out something like uh, uh, like you know uh, even just like a maelstrom or storm drops um uh, get more 
Corsairs. So he needs to find a way of like figuring out a tempo swing in this game to isolate Hero enough that he can come back in it. But so far, he doesn't really seem to be doing anything too significant. Just being a little bit fancy, trying to come in and scout a little bit of his Corsairs. But he's going to pay the price every time he does this and just lose one Corsair. And then, you know, Hero's just going to be happy to be the tax man and just, you know, claim that. Yeah, the Mutalus. I was expecting this. Four gases already from Hero, and he's sniped several of these Corsairs. We had one get sniped off screen, and then another one sniped in the main base there of Hero. So only two remain. This is a game ripe for uh, Mutalus production, and he's just going to start pumping those out. I don't see a red Archon. Do you see one, Jun? No. I, don't, I don't think there's going to be one here. He's building a bunch of Dragoons. And he's got quite a few storms available. But there's no Archon. There's no Red Archon. He's actually going to start to do some sort of push here. And I think there's a golden opportunity for here to just snipe all the Templar. Here he comes forward. Storm is available. Is he going to cast it? I don't see it. One shuttle is out. It's spotted by Hero. This, this is another move that could potentially bring Bako back in the game. Is sneaking DTs into the main. But... I don't think he's even no. going to be able to do that now that it's been revealed. Yeah, I mean, he's already shown that he's been wanting to go for the DT plays. I don't think Hero's going to let him get that kind of significant damage into the main base, unfortunately. But Hero coming into this third base location, taking out the cannons, and it looks like a... It looks like Bako's option is just going to be, like, run it down mid, and the Zonkums are on the way, but they're not yet quite finished up. If he can pull the trigger quick... Okay, they're just barely finishing in time. I think Hero barely might be able to hold on to this with five suns. It's just barely enough to, to... I think there's like at least one or two lurkers there. So with some Hydra support, he should just barely have enough to, to hold this. As long as the Hydras can stay spread out uh, spread out and storm dodge just a little bit. But it looks like um, actually there's not much uh, support coming in from the Muters yet. And the phase disruption shots just ripping through those Sunkens. And there's no surface area for the Hydras to actually take advantage of. So they can't even like get, contribute to the fight at all. And now they're kind of pinned back behind their economic line. So, so now we got a full siege mode set up from Batco, just going to be raining down onto his production line and forcing uh, bad trades from Hero. Maybe Hero could be in a lot of trouble here, but he's coming in with the Muse from behind, trying to take out some of the re remaining forces of the infantry of Batco. He's just barely clearing it up. And we got more s still at 14 minutes into the game. No speed on these zealots from these reinforcements. Kind of crazy to think about. Yeah, this was a pure Dragoon Templar attack. He had to be really cautious with how he spent his storms, and I think he threw a few too many storms out that kind of missed the mark here against Hero. You really want to wait for the full engagement of the Hydras against the Dragoons before you throw out that storm. Any, like, small skirmish between, you know, a load of Dragoons and just a couple of Hydras is great for the Protoss. He ends up throwing out a few too many, and Hero holds on to this base. That's crazy. We didn't even see any snipes on Templar. He just purely held that with the Mutalus flank and a few Hydras spread out, uh, you know, taking little fights there. If there was like 10 Zealots with speed reinforcing that attack, I think he would have been able to break it there. A big drop coming over this wall. He's going to go ahead and assault the uh, third base of Protoss and actually a drop coming down to the bottom left he's going to take another base backhoe down in the bottom left this is um gonna get weird if Protoss gets a fourth base up but this might end up getting shut down right now two cannons only Hyde just being dumped out on top of this I think he can possibly kill this Nexus yeah I, th I think he should be able to uh, I think there's some Dragoons nearby but I don't think there's any Templars and without Storm there's no way he'll kill off those Hydras in time they are going to get in the snipe on that and uh, now can also just retreat um, to safety. Um, I'm not sure if he'll have any idea of, uh, about this fourth base that wants to come online. Um, if he can scout that out, that's going to be even more annoying. But even just being reduced to two bases like this is already a nightmare position for Batco now. Um, very difficult for him to resecure footing. There's some lurker drops here coming into the natural expansion. So many probes could die. He does get a probe pull away with most of them, but did kill quite a few probes with those two lurkers. So already taking a big chunk out of the economy of the pros player, but he's still 
adamant in surging forward now, breaking through the hydro line actually, thinning those out. So there's not a huge force here, but these minerals haven't been mined out on the bottom lane. So um, here is pretty much safe from any further assaults from that angle at the very least. And instead wants to put on its own counter attack in the middle lane now. Got 16 kills on those lurkers. Uh, it's a great move, forcing the probes to run away from the third and then dropping lurkers at the natural. The no. overall saturation at that natural was insane. You could just see how few minerals remain there uh, as an indicator of how many probes have been mining at that location. And now, Hero is... I mean, not having the greatest saturation at his fourth, but he's still able to produce a lot of units. Um, he's just focusing completely on unit production and expecting a, a push here. And I think he's completely right. We're going to take a base out in the front. The third base is going to come down for uh, Bako, but he actually needs a fourth and he needs to maybe push out against Hero now. Diving forward, going to jump on top of these Templar. Two Templar get picked off, but all the Hydras die. And the Dragon yeah. number is still strong, plus two Templars in the background. He could potentially push this base, although that's a lot of hero Hydras. I mean, we've seen how well he can fight against Pure Dragoon in the past, and um, I'm not sure that Bako can make this work, but a counterattack at the same time is going to cause some chaos on the side of Hero. Two, one, two storms get out. He's got some zealots rallying forward. Let's not uh, let's not call this too soon. He's actually pushing in in a pretty heavy way while harassing these two bases at the same time. Only one lurker remains. Two more storms come out. There's just barely enough storm here to push everything back, and Hero may end up losing this fourth base. I mean, it's very possible he'll lose this base, but there is a lot of gas that's um, being dried up in the side of um, Bakker right now. He's like just barely doing it with his um, army superiority, but back at home, he pretty much is mined out and waiting for this uh, Nexus to finish on well, his third base so he can start mining again. So he's pretty much dried up while this was all going on, but he did have a supply lead, so he did have enough forces to kind of leverage against Hero and put him into a bit of a weird situation. And now Hero's starting to become mined out in his main and natural as well. Well, so maybe he can reset this power scales a little bit while taking out this fourth base. Would be kind of crazy. Hero is just barely squeezing out some high just to fight this though. He needs a perfect storm to kind of stop this from killing these hydras. I don't think that's going to be it. okay. The second storm helps out a lot. The archon morph may be enough, but I don't think so. I think there's just barely enough hydra trickle to defend this. Yeah, hi Hero's mining on two bases right now. He's just getting his drones over to that third once again, and the fourth is about to die. These Hydras bashing away at the Archon that's just buying a little bit of time to maybe snipe this fourth. The fourth hatch survives. Dude, this game is insane now. Wild. This, I, this started with a proxy gateway, and now we're yeah. here at 18 minutes, 19 minutes into the game. I mean, I did not expect any sort of recovery from... Bako, but he just killed the fourth base. He's got his own third. This is a winning situation for Protoss. I can't believe I'm saying it, but this is a Protoss win if this game continues on this trajectory. I mean, he, he's not wrong. I mean, the fourth base has just been taken out. Protoss is now on one base as well. And one base Protoss beats one base Zerg. So this is looking pretty dicey for Hero. All of a sudden has a plenty of gas, but just doesn't have the minerals to really, sh uh, you know, muster up a meaty army. He's like a very strong, potent, advanced, evolved alien race with not enough biomass to actually feel the force to actually deal with the Protoss right now. So yeah, a little bit of a catch-22 situation. And suddenly Bako's back on the board. I can't believe this is the world that we live in, Shun. Hero is about to lose to Bako? Wait, what? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, that's certainly not a sentence I thought I would ever say in my life ever, but we might be saying that today. I mean, it's kind of wild, Sam. Yeah, it's it's an or is he moment because Hero... Uh, yeah, or is I he? Mean, <laughs> Hero still has units. He's way behind. He's got hardly any... Uh, income. He's gonna snipe this uh, this Ooh, shuttle the here. The shuttle gets sniped off screen. These lurkers oh. get into the third. Oh my god, this damage is insane. So many probes just went down. He has no mining. Absolutely no mining. He just cancels everything. I think he's gonna give up the main and try to make lurkers somewhere uh, out on the map and just sandbag this push. Hopefully, Holy the, the crap. 
losing all the buildings here is going to take time. Killing all these buildings is going to take time. Maybe he can make like 10 lurkers at the third and just try to survive. There's like no probes left. Oh, yeah. I mean, sunken colonies. Lurkers going to be made. Anything. Anything to sandbag this push. Because, yeah, after killing that many probes, it kind of like gives him many more win conditions now. Um, just to kind of has to like weather the storm and keep this third base online as long as possible. But... I don't know. I mean, Bako can still do this. If he's got just an, a few probes left remaining, uh, maybe he can make this work. Uh, it's going to be extremely difficult. He's going to need like some pretty monstrous storms and what have you. Um, but it's like a doom drop going to be coming out of here. He wants to go on the, uh, the aggressive here. Whoa, I was not expecting this. I thought he was going to choose a choke. Maybe he just choose like a location to have his final stand. But he's, instead, he's going to expand to the island. <laughs> <laughs> he might lift all his drones and put them on the island. That might be the Gigabrain maneuver. Yeah. He's going to drop on the third base. As long as he snipes his Templar. Okay, the Templar is going to get his storm off, but that's a pretty decent dodge. He's going to kill this base 100%. Dude, if he goes to the wow. island with all his drones, yeah. it's absolutely goaded. This is such an insane... Oh, yeah, he's doing, oh, yeah. Yes. he's doing it. He's doing it, Sam. He's doing it, Sam. No guy's way. This guy's the goat. This guy's the greatest of all time. Okay, this snipe, guy's on snipe, snipe the... Snipe, yeah, find it. Robotics. There it is. There it is. Get it. There it Get is. it. That's the win con hey, right guys, there. Th for those that aren't sure why we're freaking out right now, because the, the, right now there'll be no situation where Bako can even get his units up onto this high ground in the top right. He does have a probe in the bottom left, but if he can't get his units up into the top right to actually kill this off, Hero can actually mine up again and still be fine. Yeah, Hero can eventually come back. It's going to take like 10 minutes for him to get back into the game. Uh, well, with this many pro with this many drones, maybe he can, you know, make a spawning because he has to make a spawning pool. Then he has to make a hydro den. He has to make extra hatcheries, make more units. This is so ridiculous. I don't think he knows about the base in the top right, man. Oh, there's some probes down here too. Yeah, but he can't make a nexus. He killed the nexus and he can't mine any more minerals, so he can't get up to 400 to make a nexus. So oh, Hero just yeah. Hero wins by default. There it is. Yeah, no nexus. So. Even though he's got these probes, he can't return any minerals. Oh, dude. Hero is just... I, I'm so happy we, we talked about this earlier on, just how locked in Hero is into the game state and how good he is at navigating weird <laughs> with situations. He just, like, heard us talking and was like, yeah, let me show you what's up. Dude, hey, if he had wow. 400 minerals, he could make a Nexus, or he could make a... Uh, you know, shuttle, the robo and shuttle, but he can't do either of those. He can't do anything. He sees it in the top right. Oh, dude, Baiko, his heart sinks. Ah, he says, Z -Z. Z -Z, yo. That's yeah, the cool way of saying it. <laughs> that is hilarious, dude. This is what he's famous for. He said that uh, in a Kespa match and almost got disqualified. And that's what they yeah. they made him change the rules. That's his way of was, saying GG. Oh, dude, that's hilarious. Oh, man, I'm so glad that I talked about that lore from the beginning of this game. Dude. Hey, I, cop I copied that for a while. I was ZZ yoing people for like a oh, really? year or two after that. Yeah, yeah, I was. Uh, well, I think Banco may have earned some fans today, even though he was a kind of a awkward addition to this squad. Putting out an epic, epic game there. Hero still showing us some insane quality. Uh, quality gameplay. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Hero. Yeah. <laughs> if there's I mean, any game you want to win, if you want to win in any style, you want to win in that style because no one is navigating those games with that level of finesse than Hero is. Like that's that's such a showcase of your ability as a player. That's that's going directly into the 2024 best of uh, archive for this uh, for this year for sure. Great great game. Um, we're getting so many good games on Monty Hall, man. It's, I'm really happy it's in the... I told you it'd be a good map. Yeah, in the SSL uh, ladder pool or the map pool this season. We're going to jump into our next game after a quick recovery here. I got to grab a drink and maybe lay down for a minute. Shouldn't? That was insane. <laughs> Can't blame you. Okay, Hero versus Speed for our next match on Kickback.
This guy, we've been talking so much about him. Speed is a absolute killer. Such a strong Terran player. This is where he really shines as well as Terran versus Zerg. So I'm excited to see what kind of match he's going to put out, what kind of strategy he has prepared for kickback. I'm sure we're going to get his best here today. Right. Yeah, he was going under the ID like um, 10 minute flash, right? I mean, mm -hmm. this guy, and, and that ID does kind of spell it out for you. He's not, he wasn't quite as good as flash, but for the first 10 minutes of the game, if you covered up the IDs, you might be like, oh, is that flash? Like, he's, you know, he is very good at his execution, especially in the earlier phases of the game. And uh, yeah, I'd love to see more from this player. He's, he's up and coming, essentially, compared to some of these other pros that have been around for you know, years and years and years and years. So it's nice to see like a, a new blend of Terran rising up in into the into the higher echelons of play. So you know, players like Sharp as well. It's, it's nice to have a much more modernized um, uh, variety of pro gamer now. He's certainly proven that he has the dedication and the grit to you know, practice as hard as is necessary to do well in these big tournaments and he's starting to get his sea legs or his stage legs under him not as shaky not as uh, nervous under the big lights on the big stage he seems to like be refining his play and you know finding his style uh, which i mean that's what you need to do if you really want to uh, excel uh, in this kind of environment speed is he's making his way there slowly and like you, I'm really excited to see his progress. Speed actually opened CC first, and yeah. Hero's going to go double hatchery before pool. So both players with absolute maximum greed. There's really nothing more greedy than what we're seeing out of these two. And I mean, it's going to be a pretty even match, I think. Yeah, this is pretty much like the mirror build versions relatively for their races, what they're doing here. Like, you know, maximum uh, greed early game, trying to get a big economic boon here. Even with a pretty delayed gas here from Hero, not trying to squeeze out as early as possible even. Just happy to get maximum economic advantage and lava advantage here. I can't really fault it. This is the kind of map you'd probably want to do this on out of all the other maps. You, this is this this is this is the map to do this on. Um, and uh, it's a little bit of countering 14cc as well. There's a lot of times where if you don't scout the 14cc early enough as Zerg and they they do a full wall and you just can't really punish it and you kind of have to play from behind sometimes. So this is a nice way of like guaranteeing that you're going to be okay against CC first, right? Yeah, CC first is so deadly and we're actually seeing the most abusive version of CC first I think which is CC first into mech it just yeah. so strong uh, I think the first person I saw doing this was flash on the ladder uh, but a lot of people have been abusing this as well and now I see it all the time on the ladder <laughs> I go up against this a lot and it is insanely powerful like all the things all the like calculations that you do in your head to be like oh i should have enough mutas to fight him at this time or like i, I can poke in you know none of that applies because there's just way more goliaths than you would ever expect yeah it's certainly trickier i mean the only way i've, I've really been able to have success against mech is when you, you get up to the situation where you've got two groups of muters and you have like you know one group outside their main one group outside their natural and you kind of like ping pong them back with the both groups of muters to kind of keep them guessing and struggling to multitask defending but uh, it's very hard to execute and as long as the terror players not a complete sausage monkey they can still get high value in their defense without much effort you have to deal with these vultures as well if a vulture slips in and starts dealing a little bit of economic damage it just makes it that much harder to overwhelm those goliath numbers and it really does seem like speed's gonna get in here and potentially get a big amount of damage one drone gonna fall immediately the links are on their way back they have speed there's a second drone this is really really rough for hero although he opened with a pretty greedy and strong build 
I mean, the greed is really high here for speed as well, and he gets damage with almost no investment. Yeah. No, I like speeds opening so far a lot more. And he's even getting another drone. No Absolutely way. beautiful play from speed. I'm so impressed oh, with him. He, double double armory. armory. Yeah, he's going full upgrade. This is full upgrade, Terran style. He's going to be like super turtle heavy. And um, this might work out really well. And think about it. On this map, so it kind of does bleed out on gas pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And he did rush up to three bases. So, I mean, there is, a, there is a world here where, yeah, I mean, speed, if he just takes it slowly but surely and uh, takes his time, he's a bit patient and just goes full on upgrade style here. He could just really outscale Hero. And eventually Hero will just dry up by like the, the 19 minute mark or whatever you just dry up completely and be dead in the water big fans of the channel will remember that uh, i think flash was the first one we ever saw not only do this build but specifically double fat our double armory play off of the uh, cc first uh, because yeah. you just you have so much more money you have you can get the gas so much quicker uh, the second gas so much quicker you can you, you have so many options from this position and he's going to have such fantastic upgrades plus you kind of have to be worried here is hero that we're, we're you know we're gonna get an attack yeah. and if he telegraphs an attack is coming and he just grabs his third cc and you know goes into a, a, a starport this is the most important place on the map right now hero has to get into this base and see that starport or, or the double armory otherwise he's just not gonna know it's coming and he's gonna react uh, badly poorly and not figure out what's going on here yeah and, and when he identifies exactly what's happening here he he won't even be comfortable making mutalisks anymore like you kind of have to once you see like the mm -hmm. lower factory count double armory you're kind of like okay i need to switch straight into hydras and i'm playing uh like a maniac because i know how stressful this game is now gonna be right yeah. this is like not a comfortable but, and he knows the the terran has a, th a free third base here this is the, another problem even if he somehow managed to keep the terran on two base he can't do that anymore the terran's got a free third base so yeah. yeah this this game is kind of a nightmare for hero to, to navigate going forward here and he's forced into making pure hydras pretty much as well if he knew what was going on in the main he's actually flown in and seen the third now if he knew exactly what was happening he would have just you know built almost no hydras and gone to a fourth made like mass drone try to get as much economy rolling as possible because he actually needs to get into Queens, and we see the Queen's Nest now. Um, Hydra Queen is probably going to be the best counter to what's going on for Speed. It's not a perfect counter, but it's the best he can do right now, because Speed has already done, I think, plus one. Uh, 1 1, and he's going to start 2 2. His army is going to be insanely good. There's not really much you can do with pure muta or pure hydra it has to be yeah uh that uh, the the queen's coming in and actually helping you to get that value and he's just gonna try and take a fourth now he's really behind the curve here i know we've already counted out here a few times or not counted him out but just said how bad of a position he was in and uh you know expected him to lose and then he somehow comes back i don't know if he can come back in this one man this would be uh, if he does it three times in a row this might be, be like impressive. one of the best <laughs> kcm episodes ever man this would be insane yeah that would be that'd be absolutely out of this world saying um but it, queens are basically the only thing that gives you any kind of um high value potency of a tempo in swinging this matchup um you can actually beat 3 free mech with 0 0 hydras as long as you have like 12 um, broodling queens and you've got perfect cloning you can actually still beat that as long as you pre-split the hydras like you can actually do some pretty crazy things as long as you've got queens to support you but yes yeah, so I, I think you're completely right I think like, it has to be queens he needs to hide the queens um, they're hiding I think at the third base area like above this dead zone between the third and the fourth right now it's not a bad place to put them um, it takes two minutes for the energy to come online for a broodling and uh, he does see the queen. So um, he knows there's going to be a queen. Yeah, very good. And, and he, I think he sees the tail end of that hive being made as well. So he knows the timing of that. This is going to be rough. No third gas for Hero. He's just trying to optimize his mineral income right now to get as many drones out as possible. He knows that there's going to be a push probably at 2-2 with an amazing, enormous amount of tanks and goliaths. 
He has to stop it with pure Hydra. Uh, the the queens are going to play a big role here because I think he's got enough time to to get out that 150 energy, but. Oh man, he can't did, be losing anything. Did you see how? Did you see how um, Hero had his Hydras um, just a moment ago before he ran them back? They were like had ever so slightly a tiny gap between most of the Hydras. Like there's actually like a, a advanced technique where you want to like slightly pre-split your Hydras versus Mech to like minimize the splash damage of the tank shots, and you could actually trade so much better as long as you don't like take too many splash hits on your Hydras as they run in. Mm, yeah, that's that's an advanced technique I haven't uh, yet. Made master there's so much going on in a mech game like this there's so many factors to take into consideration but i think the hero is just he's handling everything really well look at this he's gonna catch this oh there it is one vulture gets out it's still annoying but that is a hugely impactful catch by hero he's gonna get up here with the hydras and clear this and no time flat Get rid of that mine and get those workers back to uh, their patches. And he's definitely going to have enough time for these queens to gather that energy. He just needs to protect the drones over here at the center left. He actually doesn't have any defense over there. Uh, if he had more economy rolling, I think he would have, you know, double sunken at, at this base by now. But he's walking a very fine line right now, trying to sneak out as much as he can. And he's getting punished by speed. Yeah, Speed's doing a pretty good job of. He's kind of like sharp in that regard. He always finds like ways of just getting in there and getting a, you know little little drips and drops of damage as he as he goes. And eventually, he squeezes enough out the juice out of the orange to you know get himself a nice position and has managed to find quite a few of these drones of Hero still. Um, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about Hero's position though. Like while he was transitioning into these queens, he's got I think he's got at least like ten queens there or so. I'm not sure it's between eight and twelve. I didn't get exact count on those. Okay, yeah, 10. Okay, there you go. Um, now he's got brooding energy, so that's that's basically 10 tanks that could die here as long as the queens don't die before the, the broodlings connect. And uh, that could be enough of a tempo swing to just bowl uh, speed over right here, right now. Another continu continued aggression from speed is constantly dropping these vultures, denying mining time and killing drones. Even if you only kill a few drones, as long as you're denying mining time, it's a big damage to the Zerg as well. Taking his production offline temporarily like this is huge. Queen's coming in now. Looks like he wants to maybe get a parasite so they can get vision to come in for the the clone wave. But you can't really just come into the Goliaths like this. That you kind of have to find the opportunity because um, if the queens start dying while the broodlings are flying through the air and before they connect you just don't even kill the tanks so it's not worth it uh it's really unfortunate hero didn't rebuild some scourge to just deal with an attack like this um he has nothing to defend and he loses quite a few drones to this uh, secondary drop from speed good on him for being so persistent with this uh, very annoying tactic of just sending in drop ships and continuously dropping in different bases the high grounds are kind of hard to get your hydras up onto the up to the ramp so you know, putting some mines up there and just kind of slowing things down is amazing for speed a lot of money in the bank right now for hero he's gonna have a little bit of time here to pump out a bunch of hydras but i think he wants to deny this third base i don't think yeah. he will or this fourth base i don't think you want to allow terran any more bases in a situation like this you've got to kind of shut them down onto those three bays and hope that they're going to mine out before uh you know they just get way too out of control on three three no it's kind of ridiculous it's like you're essentially having to fight against two more maxed out terran three three armies if you let them take any additional bases each for each additional base they take it just gets to a ridiculous point the more bases that the mech terran can secure so yeah, trying to keep them on three is ideal, especially with these low e economy bases that these second and third bases are. They would mine out uh, much more quicker than usual. So if he can somehow counter and get this fourth offline for speed, he, um, speed will be dead in the water and within like a few minutes. So if he, he probably wants to set up this up, he's going to try and see if he can swing around on the right hand side with these queens and try and get on the back end of these tanks. But it looks like speed's doing a pretty good job of microing his uh, goliaths around to kind of stay in a, um, a position where he can... Uh, uh, screen the queens from getting in range of those tanks that are clumped up in that defensive position right now. But it looks like Hero's still sharking for opportunities, just being maybe a little bit conservative. Kind of speed, I think he's still dropping more and more. Vulture's coming into the 9 o'clock base yet again, just non-stop harassment from speed all game long, and Hero hasn't been doing a good job of uh, stopping this. Yeah, he's been a little slow with the Scourge this time. Like, he, he got the, the catch over top of the bottom left base, the 
the high ground base there, but he hasn't sent Scourge to just go and clear out that dropship that was hanging around the center left and gets more damage. It slows things down even more. This is so annoying to deal with. It's actually infuriating to me, Shun, just to watch these vultures get in over and over and over again because it is already so impossible to fight a mech army like this. And when you keep losing drones, it feels like nightmare, like a really horrible, horrible feeling um, what the hero is going through right now. He's trying to get in with some of these uh, queens and get some hits with the broodling, but... Speed is actually pushing him back pretty heavily, and he's almost maxed coming across the map. Yeah. There's a drop coming into to the high ground base over here. That's going to create a bit of a problem for speed, but it'll be cleaned up pretty quickly. Here we go. Okay, getting some pretty good uh, brutalings there, lowering that tank count by quite a lot. There's only three remaining. But still, the Goliath number is very high. We have to maintain this very, very big group of Hydras and get rid of these tanks before we ever engage. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's he's bled off so many units before the engagement finally happens. Maybe he's just barely cleared out enough of the tanks that now these Hydras can start to overcome the Goliaths. It does look like that is the case. So finally able to fight back this 3-3 Terran mech despite bleeding off so much of his Zerg army initially. But yeah, it's kind of a weird thing in this matchup when you're playing against mech where you kind of want to avoid fighting like a Protoss player does and wait for like one decisive engagement where you can just over overwhelm them with a pure pure advantage but usually it's so hard to achieve that advantage you need so much surface area such good execution and getting all units to move in at the same time and catching the terran slightly off balance it's just so hard to find those moments um, as the zerg it, it does seem like the onus is on the zerg to find and finesse their way through this matchup and it seems like the the, the terran mech player does have a bit of ease of transit going forward to the winning conditions yeah, just setting up the tanks in the right spot and covering them with the Goliaths. As long as the queens are paying for their broodlings with their lives, it's not going to get uh, enough of a uh, chunk of value from those queens that uh, you can you know, take a reasonable trade. Mm. Um, one thing that's missing from the play of speed right now is we don't, haven't seen any vessels at all. And yeah. EMP is like the, the, the counter to this. big counter to where Hero, you know, he's going to be stacking up all of his... Oh, wow, drop here into the space. It's kind of hilarious. Uh, one tank, two Goliaths. You never see a drop like that, but he's going to try it out right now and maybe do quite a bit of damage. Um, yeah, the, the queens are going to be spread and split and cloned onto a bunch of queens and... Or onto a bunch of tanks, excuse me, and then if, as they're coming in, they're going to be very stacked, you can drop one EMP on all of them, you're going to be in an amazing spot. Ooh, okay, he does get the Brutling yeah. on one of these tanks, but it's it's really tough. The range on the Goliaths is huge, and a lot of these queens are just going to die, even if they manage to get those Brutlings off. He gets another one, but we'll have to retreat with these Hydras. Like you said, Shin, he has to take, like, he has to kill like maybe two or three more maxed out Terran armies, and that's if Terran doesn't get another base. <laughs> it's gonna yeah, be hard. And <laughs> he's taking twelve and six o'clock right now, so I mean, you know, you can add a few more um, tallies to the amount of armies he's gonna have to kill if he can't somehow knock out these bases. Uh, more continued aggression from speed. There is enough high just popping out. Oh, beautiful mind detonations though, taking up pretty much that entire drone line. A little bit annoying for Hero to have to deal with this right now. He hasn't even saturated 9 o'clock, so, like, not really a lot of economy coming in for him. I mean, the, the natural's pretty much mined out. The only reason the third isn't yet mined out is because of how many times they had to pull drones from that, from the continued harassment from speed this game. Not even currently mining from that is Hero. Trying to see if he can find, come into this 3 o'clock pocket to punish speed being out of position, but speed already hot on his heels right now. I hate to say it, Shun, but I don't think we're going to see the comeback. Uh, like we've had no. a bunch of times already here from Hero. He's uh, getting chased down it. into this base and he's, you know, full 80 supply down uh, under a 3 3 mecking player. You gotta be ahead in supply in a situation like this. I don't see a whole lot of queens around either. Queen number has been reduced severely. More bases are being taken. This one might be shut down, but Speed's gonna get 12 o'clock. He's probably gonna start taking top right as well. And 
I mean, we're very far away from a, an army that can actually fight, can actually stand up against what Speed has brought to the center. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, he could basically try and play Ring Around the Rosie for a little while and try and get away from the Terran army, but eventually he will be pinned down some way, some when. Uh, it, it's, it's just un impossible to, to, to navigate this as Zerg. Um, it, it, there's no, he can, can try counterattacks and try and get behind the rally point and what have you but it's usually just impossible to, to to overcome those kinds of odds once it gets that bad gg finally called from hero kind of crazy it's gonna be stalk versus speed next i'm actually kind of excited to see that game sam always excited to watch speed but stork has been a real draw lately as well yeah looking forward to this next match i actually hope that we see speed go on because i want to see more speed versus zerg <laughs> showing a very interesting style in that last game i mean copying the play right out of flash's playbook pretty cool to see yeah. let's jump into our next game this should be an epic match stork versus speed here on Dominator wasn't coming to me there for a moment. Sorry, guys, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. I had some sort of allergic reaction. You might have noticed it in the cast so far. I'm a little, feeling a little bit off, but this has been. A, yeah, I mean, this has been a great wake up call, right? I was feeling a little tired, and then Hero just brought the noise, man. Holy. What an insane series of games from him. Sad to see him go down, but the robustness of that uh, CC first mech play with double armory, I mean, it can't be denied. That was insanely powerful. Yeah, no, it really was. I'm really happy that we're seeing Stalk versus Speed, though. I'm really excited to see exactly where these two stack up against each other right now. Both of them have been on the up and up recently. And uh, want to know exactly where these two players stack up against each other. It's like uh, scouting him first, going to be able to put a little bit of pressure onto this SCV that wants to build the Rex closer to the uh, rally point here. It does make it a little bit more annoying to come out and repair that. So, and with the gas deal, oh, just barely getting there. 96 minerals, not quite enough to seize that as speed. Didn't go for his usual 11 gas this game, so not able to get the gas, uh, preventing the gas deal here from against Stork. Well, the positioning on the barracks is such that going for a gasless fast expand is not the worst thing in the world. He can get the supply depot on the right hand side, and the CC on the left will create a pretty decent wall to micro against any early aggression dude stork is being so annoying with this probe <laughs> look at his level right now this is bisu level probe control this is snow level probe control this guy can hang with the best of them right now and yeah i'm very excited to see him play against speed because speed is that type of guy he's like a sharp who can really get in and punish you if you make any mistakes in this matchup and that's right. gonna put stork to the test because he is uh on like you said on the come up but i mean it's uh, a little bit contingent on what's going on in the game it's not like he's been proven in every sort of game state just yet no no and that's, that's the thing starcraft is such a crazy game that you know you can you can dot a lot of your i's and cross a lot of your t's and still come up short you know like there's the amount of things you have to to be good to be proficient at to finally get there is, is pretty crazy it's the most zero-sum game i think we have like the, the canyons of skill between the high level players are like uh, it's, it's, it's weird to think about but yeah already coming in here gets one of these marines of that zealot now putting on pressure onto these scvs that want to get this cc online already getting pretty good damage and pressure initially almost getting that zealot not quite able to find it speed being pretty good at dancing back these marines but uh, yeah two scvs gone down so far and i think that's pretty significant damage as long as the zealot doesn't die as well and now there's two i mean this is already getting a little bit out of control here for speed speed really messed up in this game like the first zealot or first first marine you can't lose that first marine um and now he's losing even more he does clean up both the zealots just not too bad but look at this stork is gonna throw down a robo in bottom center yeah. i think and do a so. really fast proxy drop into the main 
Everything's been slowed down a little bit here for speed, so he might not have uh, the presence of mind to, you know, check for this or to to prepare in time. You know, he might be just thinking he's in for yeah. a normal game. Stork is gonna get scouted. Another zealot surprisingly pops out here. I thought that was definitely gonna be a a goon. Maybe that's gonna tip the hand a this little bit. Like, well, this scout is huge though, going? because he <laughs> this scout is so huge though, because he, he yeah he doesn't see the the goon range right. So now he knows it's gonna be like either proxy robo or like DT or something here. He knows it's proxy tech, so it could be you know DT or robo or something along these lines. So he has an idea now. So at least maybe he can somehow figure out a, a min max defense against this and figure out a way of not taking too much damage. But he should be able to glean from how late that range was that this will be some kind of proxy tech right now. When you see extra zealots popping out, and he's already gone for three zealots this early, and you didn't see range. There's only two pylons in the main as well. Two pylons in the main, yeah. I mean, you're thinking DT right now. I, that's what I'm thinking anyway, if I'm watching this game and looking at it from Speed's point of view. He's going to find this. Look at that. He is actually going to get over here and see it. Speed's so good. He's so good. Nice. He's going to see that. And I mean, he's just gonna bunker it. This is so smart. Yeah. Yeah. And this works totally. I mean, like, he can, um, Stork can come out to try and challenge this, but I don't think he gets here in time to shut this down. No. And he didn't go two gates, so there's no way he has enough units to even stop this, anyway, as long as they're in position. Yeah. And with the robo going down, speed is gonna be light years ahead of stork light years ahead just targeting down the pylon is so smart he's gonna counter but i think that speed was just continuing to make uh marines yeah he's still got two he's gonna run one back um did we get a uh i think something just popped out he's actually got a he got a shuttle out just barely in time we didn't see it on screen but he got oh. a shuttle out at the very last second wow that it was possible to get that shuttle out oh my gosh now we can start to do some damage here in the main this is not optimal at all by any stretch of the imagination but he's going to get less than zero damage with this. <laughs> so I guess it's a I mean, win for Stork. <laughs> I mean, yeah. He's, he, if he, This tank needs to be microed well against these two Dragoons. I mean, Stork has done a pretty good job of like putting a dent into the economy of speed now. Um, but it's still really annoying for Stork having to get that robo taken out for free. I, it's a little bit of compensation for Stork. You know, it's kind of like I'm, I'm kind of making up a little bit for the fact that I got caught, completely caught with my pants down. But it's still not a quite a good feeling for Stork, I don't think. It's not quite the damage you're looking for to make up for it completely. Just a little bit of compensation there. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely not optimal, and we're actually going to have a push now out of speed. We still don't have range, it seems like. The Dragoons are firing at such a close range, it probably isn't quite done. It's very, very close. We've got two gateway production here of Dragoons coming to the front, so I don't think this will necessarily kill. But it's going to force a lot out of Stork. He's not going to have the Nexus down. Like, he's still delayed this third Nexus. He can't throw this down because yeah. he has to build all these units. So, this push, just by the nature of being out here and being a threat, is actually slowing down the uh, Nexus by quite a lot. Going to run forward here, throwing down mines on the right-hand side, but Stork is going to back up pretty efficiently. Diving now onto the tank. He's got more than four Dragoons, so he can two-shot these. Uh, kind of missed the two-shot there. Gets the second tank. There's the mines dragging in. They actually clear out quite a few of the Terran units. Uh, the Reaver is just stopped here. Uh-oh. Stork is falling apart right now. He throws down the pylon at the last second. So he can actually block out these units for a moment and buy himself some time to actually maybe do some damage with this Reaver. Oh my gosh. Speed is not paying attention. This could be huge damage. Yeah, he gets quite a few kills. Four kills already. Um, some of this stuff is going to start to come out. He can pick up the Reaver and go into the main. Meanwhile, siege mode is done. Speed's going to start to hit this. There's a lot of... Uh, mines here, but he can actually hit the tank. It's in range. Oh, God, that was a really big deal. So much damage on that. 12 kills now. Oh, dude. Stork is getting so many. Oh, my God. 17 kills so far. This is getting really out of hand. 
for speed. He needs to be very careful. He's almost taking critical damage now. If he loses any more SCVs, this might be too bad to, to come back from. Has still got the pressure on those vultures running by. Beautiful mine connections on those two goons. There's a Reaver that's just popped out and is slugging it over right now. Yeah, Stork has made uh, scarabs on that, so it's not completely defenseless. So the vulture's going to have to wisely retreat and rotate back to the natural expansion and try and keep breaking through. Almost taking out the support bay, so no more Reavers will be in production once he takes that out. And he's putting a lot of pressure. Oh, so many SEVs just went down. 20, 30 kills on this Reaver. This is absolutely insane insane damage. It's almost like snow levels of damage that this Reaver has done. Thousands upon thousands of minerals worth of damage. It's absolutely insane on a single unit. <laughs> and he was even slow sending that in. I mean, he had that sitting over here on the left hand side for quite some time. I think that speed just didn't even respect the, the possibility of a, another robo being made and him getting back into Reaver after losing his shuttle initially. It's like this shuttle is eventually, or losing his robo initially, excuse me. He doesn't drop the Reaver a second time. It was probably going to go down, but he might have been able to get one last shot off. Regardless, that did so much damage. I think Stork may actually have this game in the bag after a failed uh, proxy robo. I mean... Just insanity this week, Shun. Yeah. Absolute insanity. Complete wildness, yeah. I mean, at first I thought it was going to be a bit weird with this um, Protoss lineup, but yeah, woo, this week has been kind of crazy. Very entertaining, I have to say. Like, not quite the games I wanted, but I'm certainly not disappointed either. Like, it's been certainly entertaining, unexpected, like weird tempo y games where you think one player's got it and suddenly he doesn't anymore. Like, you never know quite what's going to happen in KCM, it seems. Yeah, I feel like uh, KCM. Uh, is he gonna lose his voice this uh this week i can hear him screaming in the background every time something crazy happens but there's already been like 15 20 crazy moments in this uh week of kcm and there's probably going to be more so are we here kind of saving our voices a little bit not getting that hyped but this is a really hype series i'm sure that he's very happy about the results so far and um i mean you just can't expect better when you're organizing a tournament like this. <laughs> this is exactly what you're looking right. for. It's just insane excitement. A drop actually going to come in here for speed. This is a, a Hail Mary. He has to get some damage. He's like half the supply of Stork. Um, I mean, he has great control with his drops. He's known for getting in and dealing a lot of damage. But the Sim City here is pretty nightmarish. Like you can't get in there at all to kill any of yeah. these probes you have to go around the other side and try to lay down some mines or something he's actually just going to back away i guess okay lots of units coming down here and this is going to be denied yeah that's rough speed he gets the uh, drop ship out at least so he can you know try to to deal some more damage with that a, a little bit later but that was not the damage that he needed to bring himself back in this game he needs like insane probe kills and like a long game of getting into the third base and utilizing double upgrades and all that good stuff to make this comeback yeah. I mean, he's 45 supply behind. He's trying to rely on only three factories worth of production at the moment. And it's like t nearly 13 minutes into the game. Stork's getting his fourth base online. This is not where you want to be as a Terran player. Like most Terran players would look at this game state on paper and not want to take the reins here. This is a very losing game state for the Terran. It's almost, I would say, maybe like a 90 plus percent win rate for the pros in this game state. Uh, regardless of what kind of uh, uh, ranks of players you put in there. I feel like this this may be like an experience issue with speed. Or maybe, you know, he, he maybe didn't know how long it would take to get a reaver out. Like once you kill the, the robo, you have a certain number of seconds before another reaver can actually come. Oh gosh, a dive in here to the natural. I've got to talk about this. He's just going to dive in, hits the reaver shot here into the back line. All the tanks get splashed. He's going to drop right on top of that and finish off those tanks. And just dragoons and zealots wandering in here to the mineral line. Everything blows up. Seven more kills on that reaver. GG is called. Wow, that was a quick conclusion to a crazy game.
Oh, <laughs> dude. Yeah, I was trying to say. Yeah. I, uh, maybe Speed doesn't know the amount of the actual seconds that it takes to make a robo, make the um, the robotic support bay, a shuttle and a reaver. Um, no. Or maybe he just wasn't expecting Stork to make another robo as his initial robo was dying. <laughs> he thought he had more time before a reaver could come out or that the reaver would be sent for sure on the defensive. But he just sent that directly across the map, believed in his ability to just keep throwing down buildings in the natural, kept on building pylons and gateways to sandbag the push. And get enough dragoons out to defend that really well played by Stork. Ah, so much excitement today, Shun. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like too much to handle, and you don't even know what's going to come next. There's going to be either Action or Jadon going up against Stork. So far, Stork having to carry the torch for the Proto Squad. Maybe he can go all the way and do like some kind of crazy stomp and, you know, somehow get a point on the board here for Protoss, but it's going to be tough. Jadon going to come out here to take on Stork. PVZ on Minstrel once again. Just a wild map, and I'm curious to see how Jadon going to handle things here yeah i'm not sure how he's gonna handle the complexity of this map uh, especially in late game pvc five lanes to have to worry about very weird geography to boot not the most easiest thing to navigate and uh, yeah pretty much you could just die just like one mistake of not like you know properly keeping an eye on one of the lanes and they get on top of your rally point storm you into death and now you've got to try and dive in through a tight choke to save your production and the pros just completely annihilate you. It's a weird map, very difficult to navigate and hard to play on for Zerg players. For anyone really, but um, I think especially Zerg in like the mid to late phase, things can just fall apart so easily with a few mistakes. Some things have been changed about this map in the KSM and, and SSL version. Uh, for instance, the there's been eggs added to some of these mineral lines so that you can actually just kill the eggs and, and create a little bit more unit flow uh, to to move your army between the different lanes a little bit easier but we haven't really seen anybody utilize that and i still feel that this map is far from being figured out by zergs it's it's still a really tough situation every time we see uh, ZVP on this map. Yeah, it seems like Zergs are, are, are trying to still figure out a way of being a bit more comfortable on this map. It's certainly far from um, anywhere close to being finished in that process, it seems, because uh, they have been having a rough time of it, especially in those mid to late phases where you've got like four bases and you're trying to get online in the super late phase and the Protoss hit you with powerful timing attacks, which can seem insurmountable if you're caught off guard trying to navigate on this wonky map. There's nowhere, I think one of the main problems is there's nowhere here uh, really where you can fight the Protoss in an area that you can get a good concave if the Protoss army is yeah. big enough. The Protoss so, army so will up. always move through any of these lanes with a front that just can't be concaved. It, it, they can hit you, you can take the fight, um, but they're always going to have, you know, op opportunities to storm big clumps of units if you take the full engage. It's it's tough. Really, really tough. You kind of have to sit defensively a lot of the time across bridges and hope that the Protoss like comes into your, your concave in that way. But if you want to fight in a lane, there's just no real option for that. It's all about counterattacks here, I think. Right. Well, yeah, the way to the way to play this map is counterattacks, but because of the asymmetry of the geography, it makes synchronizing your counterattacks very challenging because, you know, to actually calculate the exact time it takes to go around or something, you know? Yeah. Like, it, it can be very difficult to actually execute that and to make it work well. And I think that's the problem that most people are having is like, like, you know, coordinating the, the, just the army movement and what have you. Coordinating the army movement um, has an extra layer of challenge here because the pathing on this map is so wonky. 
getting a army to move from say the the bottommost uh, lane into like the second uh, to bottommost lane is super hard everything's getting caught and I think that's the reason why yeah. they added those eggs into that area but even if you open the eggs and uh, open the path to, to unit flow <laughs> if you've got lurkers in the army and hydras a lot of them are just gonna get stuck it's so annoying but let's let's take a step back from the overarching uh, problems with this map in this matchup and talk about the game a little bit here we've got stork with a nexus first going up against jadong who i think opened with a, a hatchery first did you see that was it uh spawning pool before hatchery uh, do you know what we, we, we were so on the topic of the minstrel cycle that i actually don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a funny name for this map the minstrel cycle yeah uh apt apt name it's uh my emotions playing this map are, are in a similar state so makes sense um yeah. we've got a spire coming up here jadong either way he opened is going to be you know min maxing here with very few links coming out and getting into his spire tech which is very standard in this matchup it doesn't mean he's going to go for a uh, mutilus all in like we saw out of hero especially with no additional gases being added on um it's likely that we'll just see a very standard game uh, possibility for like five mutas and just a switch into hydra or maybe no mutas at all and uh, a pure <laughs> hydra build with six hatch and um yeah just just minimum defenses for the air maybe a couple of pairs of scourge or something like that this is all looking very normal and natural and that actually worries me with the map being so crazy i'd like to see more aggression out of zergs on this map just to try right. and get it over with well uh, yeah also i think if you can maybe be a little bit aggressive and with like some fake hydra bus and what have you you then could maybe you know set up a you know a contain and, and that kind of gets rid of the other problems of, that the map has like if you can kind of you know bring the fight to the protoss with a contain or something maybe that kind of like makes it m much more simplified and going into that mid-game phase where you can actually set up a, a concave and what have you rather than having to worry about being choked up so much and struggling to coordinate counterattacks later on in the other phases no yeah yeah that makes sense to me to just get more aggressive do something that uh, uh will help you to mitigate those those difficulties second stargate here wow wow okay yeah stork looks at the build and he says you're probably gonna mute me but i don't think that's the case jadong going in with the scourge he hasn't spotted this yet but he's kind of close um, just one sunken colony here that might actually lead Stork to believe even more that there's uh, a mutilus play coming. The sunken's usually uh, reserved for a mutilus play. Uh, I don't even see the hydralis den yet, so maybe he is going to make mutilus with just a later uh, third gas, but that could be completely yeah. countered here by what Stork's doing. Oh, absolutely. If Jadong doesn't figure out that it's going to be a double stargate, he's just going to go into mutas and might be a little bit blind counted here. And it looks like that is what's going to be transpiring. Um, even getting some damage with the, the, the zealot split here while Jadong's chasing this one down in the main base look how much damage the zealots doing denying mining time and maybe getting like two, dro two, two drone kills here it's huge yeah this is a moment when you really want to be droning uh, as Shadong, you just built a few mutas to counter the zealots that pushed across the map and he starts his hydralis den but he's very far away from having a good number of hydras to actually counter these corsairs and keep the overlords alive he's gonna have to rely on scourge mutilus control to keep a check on stork who's about to i think push out on the map with a scary number of course okay sees the stargate in the natural he hasn't seen the stargate in the main but he might assume that there's uh two stargates now and he's, yeah he sees the number i think he's completely aware of it at this point what is he popping out of these eggs is it going to be pure hydra or is he going to pop out a huge amount of scourge and try to you know do a surround play with them yeah it's hard to say really because he runs the risk if he go if he commits into scourge you just could just die straight up if they just like gun down your scourge with those corsairs the game's just over mm -hmm. so it's like it's, it's hard to really figure out that like you kind of like you have to put all your eggs into one basket usually so you yeah. either go like pure scourge or pure hydra 
Pedro. You don't want to like kind of dibble and dabble. Um, and I don't know what he's going to pick. I, I think maybe Hydra's is probably better in this this situation. But it looks like Jalen's going for pure scourge. Does a pretty good surround on those corsairs, but five are still remaining after all this is said and done. And there's only a few handful of muters left over, which are going to be picked up very quickly by those upgraded neutron flares. And now the overlords can start dying in short order as well without any ground infantry. Uh, some of the drones are going to start going down to these uh, zealots as well on top of that. So he might even start supply blocking Jadong if he's not careful. Just needs one more overlord kill and then you can finally start to cut the production of the Zerg player coming into the main base to see if he can do just that. Three overlords here are going to get under threat. Just two or ju just five Corsairs. Two Scourge are going to be chasing that. They have armor, so you can't quickly shoot th these down. Oh, the Overlord's a little bit out of position. This DK may be able to slip by. It can get over here towards the ramp, but Overlord's here were not picked off, and he only gets one kill. Jadong handled this remarkably well, considering what a rough situation that was. The drone control is fantastic, keeping the zealots off of the uh, sunken colony at the cost of, you know, some drones. I think it was completely worth it. He did get into hydras after uh, pumping out a lot of scourge, and he manages to not get supply blocked during all that, which is insane yeah. to me. You basically yeah. always get supply blocked in a situation Almost like always. that. Almost always. It's very weird that he didn't, actually. Um, very, I would have to say, like, he's, he's pretty much navigated through this turbulence with a lot of grace like pretty much every zerg would probably t go down to a situation where they were just not able to produce anything for a while and, oh shit i've got to make some overlords now and it's like gets frustrating and somehow he didn't manage to get into that situation did a very good job of like um maybe split splitting up his overlords enough to to keep them from being hard to find i don't know exactly what went on there but somehow managed to avoid any supply blocks and mitigate a lot of potential disasters there stork did not find quite the levels of damage he wanted to with that attack he put a lot of gas investment into these Corsairs. Absolutely, it's really slowing down his Templar play and he's keeping the pressure on with Zealots running around right now as he's taking this third base, but it's not going to be long before Jadong has, you know, three, four groups of Hydras to start blocking down all of these lanes and with the, the tightness of the lane, I mean, if your uh, Hydras start walking through one of these lanes, it's not like you're going to be able to hide Zealots somewhere in the lane mm. they're definitely going to be picked up and uh killed off um yeah he's going to find some here in the middle i'm going to bring all these hydralists together that's a lot of zealots it's actually not enough hydras to take this fight just yet you're gonna have to bring them all together here to take this but uh, i mean just tracking these down and, and pushing them back is pretty good for jadong i think you need to run right now stork oh he's gonna yeah, try he and to take run. this fight this is not a very good fight and we might actually see a counterattack after this one if Jadon clears out all of these zealots. Yeah, look at that. Only four managed to run away. Ugh. This is rough for Stork. He really needs to start transferring Templar over to that third base. Otherwise, he might just get overwhelmed. Yeah, he doesn't have any Templar over here. Just four cannons and all the Templar yeah, in the natural. This is a little bit rough. Yeah, Stork really overestimated how strong his 1-1 one -one Zealots would be in that stage. Like, there was just way too much critical mass of Hydras already stacked up. And that's not even assuming that they might micro a little bit there and make it even harder for them to clamp down onto them. So, a bit of a weird decision from him to commit to that. It now thins out his infantry force enough that he now has to be completely defensive. There'll be no more map presence for Stork for the time being. Even having to kind of chill back with these Corsairs because they're in lower count here. He can't afford to replace them. So, if they, any of them die, he's in trouble right now oh boy jadong just pounding out drones down to that bottom left base i just saw you know at least 20 drones get sent down to that area and he's going to be sitting here on a pretty four base economy with a, a bunch of extra hatcheries finishing up his macro is going to be insane I haven't seen a Queen's Nest just yet, but he can slam out so many Hydras and there's such a lack of uh, infantry here for Stork. I don't know if he'll be able to put pressure on anywhere and Jadong may even be able to counterattack that third base. Uh, if well, Jadong... Yeah. Jadong has to remain active though. Like the, yeah. the the onus is still on Jadong to keep the pressure onto Stork. He has to keep doing this, coming in the back, sniping these high templars, pick up one dragoon, then back out again. Keep doing that 
over and over again before the fight actually happens. Um, because then, then the infantry won't have enough potency once it finally gets to his production, which is what we don't see sometimes. Sometimes the pro, the pro or something gets in position way too for free, and then it goes towards wrong. But Jaehyun, not doing a pretty good job of sniping off pretty much all of the high templars here. I think, and only if dragoons pretty much remaining with the lurkers. The zealots are mostly negated, so needs a lot of dragoons to punch a hole through here. There's not a lot of infantry on this northern flank for Jaehyun, but there is a couple of lurkers he can shuffle down to borrow here. But I think he'll just wait to get us around from the southern threshold. There's not a lot of infantry left for Stork. This should be all cleaned up now. This is a big overextension from Stork, but I still can't fault him for attempting it. Yeah, he really wanted to just come in here with this uh, timing attack and deal a, a lot of damage, but man, the economy, the macro of Jadong is on point today. You can see how many lurkers he's managed to spam out here in the front. How many hydras are coming out. We're starting to see lings added on as well. We should have a hive on the way at this point with four gases. You can definitely afford that. And I mean, there, this was never going to work. That's just way too many units from Jadong. Uh, he yeah. needed to be a little bit more tactical with his play. I know that Bisu uh, would say you need to... Or Stor uh, Snow would say you need to... Uh, trade storm energy for units at a point in the game like this. You need to come forward, trade out some units, back away, keep that Dragoon number high uh, so that you can push through these higher Lurker numbers a little bit later. And he's just yep. lost a ton of those Dragoons. He's going to take a fourth base, and I don't know if Jadong's in position to actually assault that, but I mean, he is going to get into Hive here really soon, and we're going to see a Jadong like... Uh, from the Jadong of old, the sort of Sauron Zerg Jadong that we love yeah. to see. Yeah, pure Tyrant Zerg mode. And and I have to say, I was thinking the same thing earlier. Like, this does seem to be like Jadong with a bit more finesse and control over the game right now. And he's done a great job of playing keep away with these High Templars. And look how active he's being all game long with these Hydras hunting down these High Templars. Exactly what he needs to do. This is like Zerg versus Protoss 101. Like, there's nothing the Protoss player can do if most of your High Templars are dead by the time that you start to fight his army. And jadong has got such a powerful economy that he's okay to throw away a few pockets of Hydras and Lings to keep the Protoss at bay. Um, it's going to be just trying to come up to this um, natural expansion of the fourth place, third base location for, for Stork. He won't be able to try and commit to an attack on that, but he can come in behind the army and threaten the rally point and kill probe transfers like this, which is brilliant damage without really committing to any units here. Yeah, very low commitment attack there from Jadong. Not a lot of units being sent in here. He's just controlling these small pockets of hide, just grabbing what he can and bailing out little raiding parties all over the map, dealing that little damage. And Stork, although he got four bases online really quick, doesn't have probes at that base in top right, so he's not really mining off of four bases just yet. He needs to remake some probes here. Uh, and get that base online whereas i mean even though jadong's on even bases at the moment he's getting another online and he's transferring into this hive with a you know really strong economy and strong drone count he's completely fine here to be on the even yeah. number of bases with protoss for a little bit um if i'm stored especially I, I, with the high saturation true true i think i would be considering a transition into a uh, reaver at this point because i don't think we're going to be able to bowl over jadong anytime soon yeah I, I wouldn't i wouldn't fault that at all i mean you you, you need to um find, find ways of um navigating this mid to late phase because it can get a little bit awkward from here it will be very easy for stork to be frustrating for jadong and come in and try and lay siege to some of these um expansions which are way harder to defend like these first four bases that jadong has taken are way easier to defend than anything else that's out on the map everything else is like escalated in risk factor by like my magnitudes of 10. Oh, I really don't want to see Stork commit here. I like the uh, coming forward and storming a bunch of these units, um, but he v really should not commit to breaking the natural right now. The Dark Swarm is slowing him down and he's grinding out all of his Zealots. This is a mostly Dragoon army. We're almost out of Zealots here. I think the last one just went down. We've got one yeah. Archon and a huge amount of Templar, a huge amount of Dragoons. You, you cannot be losing this army. This is such a high-value army we're seeing right now at Stork. 
Jadong is moving around the side. He actually can't flank that army too easily. If there was an easy way to flank this, I think that Stork would just be screwed. Instead, it's going to be a big attack over here towards the natural. He's going to bring up a ton of lurkers here and start to break through this. If only got two cannons in the natural, he could possibly attack into the main here. Yeah, look at this. He baited the zealots into like a massive like lurker burrow. So now that's that. But most of those reinforcements have already softened up. The only thing really there that's got any meat is the two high templars with their sonic storms, which are laying down their leverage now and getting pretty good damage. But this is a big issue for Stork. Now he has to like you know keep his army back. He's going to be much more pinned down to securing his rally point, and that will give um, a lot more oxygen to Jadong to like resolidify his position with this six o'clock expansion coming online start sending in stream of um, links here and there just to keep the army pinned down while he gets more and more production going because he knows that if he can keep the pressure on stork eventually he'll whittle this army down to a nub and with enough value out of the plagued and cracklings he will whittle this protoss force down slowly but surely even on supply jadong is just rallying masses of units forward it's up to stork to take a base at 12 o'clock at the same time oh that's really interesting he's keeping dts up there to try and hold that attack yeah. there are some overlords uh, in position to block this but dts can take out a lot of lings if you're just going to send like small ling counter attacks to try and shut down this base it's not going to go too well for you he actually brings up some hydras as well and even this small amount of units is actually going to be able to deny the uh, fifth base here from stork it's not the end of the world the fifth base is not quite necessary just yet. It would be nice to have it, uh, you know, finished and defended already. But just sitting here on four four bases, I think Stork can make a couple more maxed out maxed out armies and try to push down into this uh, bottom center. The bottom well, center is such a small uh, lane. If you get your entire force together and try to shove through here, it's going to be really hard for Jadong to defend against that. Yeah, but the one thing that Stork has to contend with is his main and natural are just now drying up, whereas because Zerg are much lower saturation and his like, move, uh, minerals moved out a bit more, like relatively speaking, Jadong's just slightly got a little bit more than he should have relative to what Stork has right now even though it looks like they've got pretty you know five to four bases like they should have so there's a little bit of a dry spell for stork where he's not able to like break that gap in the supply uh, lead at the moment so it's still relatively even on supply only ahead by like t um, five or ten or something and just constant plagues coming out of jadong and stork's trying to do what he can with these uh, constant um, storm skirmishing but he hasn't got like a, a massive standing army really so he keeps bleeding off like small pockets of tech units here and there so it's keeping the scales of power relatively favorable to jadong in this situation well, this is an interesting base that Stork is trying to take over here, the one that faces up towards the uh, top lane. Whereas Jadong, I mean, he's he's covering that area. He's taking another base over uh, the, the kind of rough third base, the middle of the map third base that you can take. He's taking that as like his sixth. And just set, setting up bases all around the map and defending with Defiler, it makes it so hard for the Protoss to push in anywhere. I think we really do need a transition into the Reaver at this point. Uh, or no. he's with the mostly Dragoon army, Dragoon, Zealot, High Templar, Archon. Like, you're not going to make a whole lot of progress against uh, Jadong's play. And yeah, the, the plagues are getting so much value. It's, it's kind of crazy. He's actually wedging himself into a position where... Uh, we might see a flank out of Jadong. It's still pretty tough to get around this army, but you could go through the middle of the map and get to the back of this and set up a bunch of lurkers and try to crush this force, especially once it's been plagued. Uh, it's going to be much, much easier to whittle that down and destroy it eventually. Yeah, I mean, until you get super up, super late game upgrades with 333 three. you just you're just like paper uh, like a paper tiger once you get played because you haven't got any um, shield upgrades to really like protect you once you get played like your army will just get melted so quickly it's ridiculous especially with cracklings and lurkers and what have you going to town pretty good at counter attack here from stork denying some of the gas mining in the bottom left and killing some drones but oh. i don't think he's going to be able to kill the hatchery there unfortunately this, oh, this game is kind of wild like he killed on this lurker, Shun. Yeah, that lurker got a huge transfer of probes, it looks like. 
I'm pretty impressed with Jadon's play in this game. Yeah, he's been keeping up really, really well with the supply of the Protoss player and mitigating some of the issues of this map by getting into that Defiler and doing it, doing so on four bases. It's really past the four base mark when things get really complicated, tough for the Zerg player. Um, holding any of these bases with the minerals facing the outside. Oh my god, this is a fake drop. Doom drop. I think this might be a fake Doom Drop to bring the army back into the main base. I think he's only got low committal units here. This will only be like some Lurkers and Defilers. Well, maybe he's got quite a few. Okay, there's quite a few units in here. Way more than I thought. I thought it's just going to be like a low uh, commitment here just to kind of keep the army back. But I actually did commit a decent amount to this. But the DT counter drop coming into the main base could be disastrous if he doesn't uh, do something about that quickly because he can lose this Spire on the left. But it looks like the Lurker was enough DPS to kill most of those DT so he shouldn't lose too many critical tech buildings here. Meanwhile, Jaelong doing a pretty good job of being annoying and keeping Stork completely busy back in his main base while now the army comes out. Basically, that is what he's doing. Um, he just committed way more units to it than I thought he would. And now that the army's way back in the main base, he can just come in and start hitting these expansions with Defiler hit squads. And uh, this should be all she wrote here for Stork if he can't, like, figure this out quickly. Because Jaelong's going to start hitting all of these expansions in quick succession. Yeah, multi tasking on another level here for Jadong. He's hitting everything at the same time. The... Oh, <laughs> plague on a bunch of these lings. Kind of hilarious. Those are all going to be brought down to one HP, but uh, worth it, I guess, to get rid of that one DT that was, uh, you know, raining hell down on those bases, killing off tons of drones. Some DTs coming out here to help uh, clear this, but cracklings snagging up some of these uh, Templar kills are amazing. Yeah, even getting this around on that. Dude, Jadong's playing on another level right now, getting the max value out of even these small hit, hit squads of Lings. Funny to see cannons built out in front of the natural there for Stork, but I guess it's useful when they keep sending units over to that location to try and harass that area. Might as well have a few extra cannons in that spot to try and keep his... Uh, rallies alive here. Another Archon going right. to be made. We still don't have Reavers here for Stork, and he's struggling to hold another base without them. Yeah, honestly, I feel like the Reavers are like the tactical siege units that he needs to like really put himself into a better position here. It's the one thing that's missing from this, the, the utility of this army. And it's forcing him to have to commit to fights much more heavily rather than just like take a point defensive positioning and being able to get damage under the swarms still easily without having to use storms. So yeah, I don't know. Like this is pretty weird for Stork. You know what it feels like to me, Shun, a little bit is like when uh, Zerg players won't build queens against Mech because they they're negating yeah. one of the the best tools that they have to get cost efficient against their opponent's armies, um, right. and hold on to bases. Right, like if you don't have tanks and you've got a bunch of queens to to you got a bunch of queens to kill the tanks and you've got some sunken colonies to hold the Goliaths. It, Makes it so hard for anything to break, just like, uh, you know, putting down um, a couple of Reavers at a base it makes it so hard to to get through, even with uh, the Dark Swarm and Lurkers and Lings. Um, Stork really negating or deciding not to build that unit. Maybe his downfall in this game is trying now desperately to get that sixth base online or fourth, fifth base online, excuse me. Uh, as the fourth, excuse me, as the third mines out, the fourth is getting low as well. Another drop into the main, nothing here to defend. We're gonna lose uh, all the production, it seems. Stork just does not have anything back at home, and this actually could be a very tactical killing blow here for Jadong after all the massing and macro that he's done to just pick off all the the gateways there goes a shuttle i don't know if that was filled with anything but it probably was had at least a dt or something in it maybe some templar yikes um i think this yeah. is this is gonna end with a this is death by a thousand death by ten thousand claw marks from these uh cracklings in the course of this game just slowly whittling stalk down to a skeleton here the dinosaur not looking quite as fierce on this showing at least and jadong seems to be like pretty much firing on all cylinders today like way more consistent respectable play from him trying to see if he can get these lurkers to be annoying and snipe up more of these probes but just going to be retreating them for now 
but yeah, the game on top of this production like this, taking all these gateways, pretty much like siphons off any power that Stork might have been able to muster, and uh, now going to be relying purely on these um, better late than never reavers, but really needed these earlier on. Yeah, it feels like Stork's going to go out with a whimper rather than a boom or a bang. He doesn't have any production left. He's now 40 supply behind, and Jadon just has the, the production. He's got the units. He's going to be able to push through. I don't care how many storms you have, how many cannons you have. Eventually, we're going to get on top of this stuff with Dark Swarm and push through for the win. That fifth base is... Uh, necessary we have to have this in order to to win this game there's no uh, there's no world where stork still manages to win if he loses his base so he's gonna throw everything over here he's gonna bring the reaver up as well eventually to try and help this out but you're right it's too little too late archons are standing strong but the cannons are starting to fall and the reaver bring being brought forward here is just not gonna have the dps to save this it seems yeah i mean archons are okay but under dark swarm they're only doing splash damage then you know, they're not really like potent enough here you need lots of reavers and those kinds of siege units to get the cost efficiency trades but yeah unfortunately gonna be going out of a whimper it looks like stork just hanging on by a thread now as jadong streams lines more and more of sauron-esque zerg like units forward onto this battlefield it looks like it, it, i don't i don't think like there's any way that stork could win this game unless jadong was making more mistakes but it seems like because jadong's been quite on the ball and like not really like failing to dot any i's or cross any t's this game there's just never been an opening for stork to really like you know change the balance of power and he's slowly just going out of a win bit got a few more lurkers underneath this dark swarm the last of the archons are about to fall the final hold of protoss two shuttles here with nothing inside gg is called GG. stork taps out a beautiful game here from jadong to take out this final protoss player well with protoss being removed from the board albeit a little later than expected I think Stork put up a pretty decent fight there. Batco putting out a pretty reasonable game as well. Now we're down to just Terran and Zerg. Light versus Jadong here on Radeon. It'll be a real challenge for Jadong taking out Light on such a standard map here. Yeah, and Light isn't like uh, the typical Terran when it comes to this matchup as well tends to cut a lot of SCVs to hit certain timing windows and have certain critical mass units that other players wouldn't be able to you know, ascertain with their continued SCV production. So can uh, be a little bit too much to handle for some Zerg players. Light does seem to have his own little style, so can be kind of tricky to navigate when you're playing against him. He will catch you off guard by having more Marines than usual at a certain phase of the game and just hit you with this like little five second window just before your lurkers are hatching or what have you and then you find yourself in uh, a game ending situation just because you're not quite ready for it. This is something I wanted to talk about uh, with regard to Terran versus Zerg and the mm. really prominence recent prominence that we've seen uh plus one like really fast plus one reach in this matchup um yeah pl plus one four racks seems to just have this new level of popularity on standard maps we haven't really seen before uh, right ex aside from like you know two two racks pressure that was like almost ubiquitous in every game for a certain amount of time. Um, about, you know, two, three years ago, it was like every single game was that two racks versus two hatch meta. Um, right. But I think we're seeing a similar rise in uh, the like one racks FE into really fast plus one. And I'm actually not convinced that it's because of the plus one attack. I actually think it's because of the plus one armor and the, the timing it gives you with a huge right. amount of bio to break through the lurkers, like you were saying, uh, just as you have, you know, bare minimum number of lurkers, you got like three or four lurkers at a third base and you're uh, 
barely hanging on with a couple of sunkins or whatever. Usually players these days are taking uh, those low ground bases, you know, other naturals as their third. Um, right in that moment, having the plus one armor and the plus one attack, it allows you to bust positions that you uh, otherwise wouldn't be able to and get wins or at least big advantages. Um, out of situations like that that other builds just oh. don't allow yeah absolutely saying it's a um, very astute observation ba yeah basically what we should try and find a way of reinforcing more in this matchup um it does seem to be like especially with the popularity of the four racks it does allow you to come out onto the map and get more map presence against the early mutalist play as well so it kind of guarantees you some kind of aggression to put on pressure and if you have got those earlier upgrades, it does kind of give you these uh, bu new bus potentials that you just didn't have in the previous days. You were kind of sat around waiting for like 2-1 to finish later on. Um, um, whereas having the earlier 1-1 one, one does put, give you, with it requiring three subterranean uh, spine shots to kill a marine instead of two from the lurkers, it, it just makes it so much harder for the battle calculations and you can just you know, run in there, snipe one lurker and then do a little bit of micro, split up your marines a little bit and suddenly you're busting through and killing the zerg and yeah, I mean, I, I think I really do like this style from Terran players and I have been recommending a lot to my Terran friends to play this kind of style more. I feel like it gives you the most flexibility, personally. Yeah, it's a little flimsy at first and some players, you know, they, they struggled to, to make it work uh, against more aggressive Zerg, um, Mutalist Micro and stuff, right? You don't have the fastest stim, which means you don't have the fastest range which gives a little bit of vulnerability uh, in the early mid game. But I think that Terran has worked out a lot of those kinks. They seem to be very robust with that type of play now. It's not actually what we're getting here from Light. So kind of negating my earlier uh, talking points there. And we're just going to have a pretty normal two racks play, uh, getting the eBay uh, at the normal time here in order to block um, with turrets the incoming mutas that are gonna be on the way here soon um like can't find uh, any damage just yet but he's moving over towards the top right potentially to snipe this hatchery let's see if jadon can hold on to this because his mutas are on the way right now and they're about 30 seconds away from getting onto the field and potentially stopping this attack he's trying to force stims here because there's only one medic and uh, that might give him a, a way of fighting this if the the units are over stimmed and the medic's not able to top them all up but i don't think he's going to be able to save this you know i think with the fire bat here i think it's too much and the mutas are too slow he's going to cancel yeah um, a bit unfortunate for jadong but the the additional mutas coming from the main hatchery would never get there in time so he should be able to clear this um this is kind of sacrificial he just stimmed again so if we just wait another 10 15 seconds before going in the stim runs out and these marines are all going to be very low another stim he really just needs to wait a little bit longer i don't like him like diving in right now he really wants to get his hatchery up uh, that's the reason why he's diving in right now but i mean you can just basically let the terran finish themselves off by stimming this much with only one medic and no energy eventually they're going to reach such a low point in their health it's almost like they've been plagued you can come in and just kill them yeah. all won't even be able to stim anymore I think I want to see more patience from Jade. I, mean, I understand getting the hatchery up a few seconds earlier, like it's great, but I feel that's like speeding or to like get to work. Like you're gonna arrive a few seconds earlier, but you might get in a lot of trouble to do so. And I feel like mm -hmm. taking too much damage on your Muta flock like that. Now you don't have enough potency to come in here and start opening up like this position by killing a turret or two. Now he doesn't have. Now he has to wait even longer to get his Muta flock up to full stack, and now he can't put on as much pressure. Right, he took some damage. He lost the Muta. Uh, kind of unnecessary losses there in our estimation, I suppose. But Jadon gonna get over here now and looking for opportunities to maybe snipe a couple of SCVs. Uh, one, two is not really anything for Light. He's done a good job macroing so far, so he should be already past that 35 uh, SCV count uh, around the moment when he, he generally tends to cut. SCVs, so yeah. uh, he's gonna be okay. Uh, you need to get at least like five, six SCVs to make things worth it, and even more in this situation when you've lost your 
third hatchery. And it's part, it's a, a good percentage, you know. Uh, th that's like a 50% loss in your overall production capability, and you're not getting that gas. It's a pretty rough loss. Yeah, honestly, he would need like 10 or more to like make up for how like bad this third base going down is. Like six is like when everything's going gravy for you and you're you're on curve. So with how late this third is, yeah, unfortunately, like I don't think he's going to find the kind of damage to compensate for that. But he could still make a game of it. And he's if he could, he could do a pretty good job of picking up some of these units, forcing more and more stims. Uh, Light's pretty good of his bio control, like keeping the Marines in like a square formation to make it harder for the Mutas to come in here and uh, get damage for free. But look at this beautiful Mutas worker from Jedi making very short work with that bio force. Now going to coming in and cleaning up the remainder of those medics as well. Getting the four medic kills afterwards is very valuable as well. It's one thing killing all the Marines, but making sure you kill the medics as well is a very, very powerful move here. Very big tempo swing. Takes a long time for the Terran to get a critical mass of units to come out onto the map again now. It gives a lot more oxygen for Jadong. But the Firebat runs into the third base if he's not paying attention. The Firebat's actually on 12 HP right now. You can actually just kill that with the drones if you pay attention. Yeah, sometimes you're not even going to click on that and run away with the drones when you could just kill it. Um, yeah. That happens more often than you might expect. Um, <laughs> Zerg players rarely ever click that and check. They're just like, oh, Firebat, I have to run. But um, I've seen, you know, a bunch of drones running away from a 5 HP Firebat. It's literally one hit away, but, um, yeah. you know, you might end up losing a bunch of those drones and uh, or just denying that mining time. Uh, simply the, right. the, the presence that the Firebat has uh, when it's at that front line. Now, Light is getting some tanks out. It's a good move because we did switch into Lurker pretty quickly. The transition was very fast here from Jadong, and he was hoping to contain Light a little bit. Uh, but with three tanks out already, that containment is a pipe dream. You really can't hold this position for too long. Those tanks are going to be hitting from range. He does get one tank, which is actually a huge deal, slowing down this uh, push out by quite a lot. And he's finding more damage with the mutas. Oh, dude, he's not pulling out. There we go. Okay. A lot of damage there. A lot of damage. Yeah. Pretty painful stuff. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Unwanted pregnancy. You have to pull out in time. <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> anyway, um, here comes the Scourge as well. Let's get a connection on the side as it goes down, but it's very low in the Muta flock, so now if some good um, splitting of the Marines can start to kill off these Lurkers one at a time and bust open the position for Jadong, and there's not a lot of defenses back at home, maybe the Defiler's out, but I don't know, maybe there's a window for Light here to come in and do something, but I still think it's going to be challenging. It's not Oh. as bad of a situation as what we saw from hero however yeah. uh, like the the base was not uh, killed instead it was denied and it came up pretty quickly after so the economic situation is not as bad but the the strategic situation i think is worse because jadong uh, is in a situation is in a position where light is going to be able to alternate between these two bases he's not contained he's got tanks royal in their game versus hero uh, didn't have the ability to get out and block defilers from coming across the map but light can and he's going to continue to increase the number of vessels here it's not going to be an all-in play from jadong instead he's going to try to sit back from this position and play from behind try to get himself into uh, you know late game four base with ultra -lisk. it's not going to be the same game we saw versus hero yeah, unfortunately, sometimes you get yourself in these positions as Zerg where you just have to play from behind and just swallow it. I mean, it is what it is. Um, it's especially the case against Protoss um, as Zerg. Um, you just have to play from behind like you would normally and just, you know, hope for the best. Jadon's going to make a good good effort of it, though. Uh, he has got barely enough supply to survive, you know, around the sort of, you know, 68, 670 mark. You've just barely got enough Defilers and Lurkers to technically be immortal. The problem is, is that Terran players can sometimes get a good 
good tempo swing, running with a round of fire bats or what have you, underneath some dark swarms and taking out your lurkers that used to be invulnerable. So there are some ways that Terrans can still kill you even if you are on 70 supply, but well, the Overlord spots the dropships as well. So he, he, if he's paying attention, he knows about these dropships, maybe Jadon can catch these. Yeah, this is the scariest thing when you're in a difficult situation like this, when you're barely holding on to your front is when dropships start flying in yeah. and hitting your, your mains and your naturals and your third base and fourth base and drawing your attention every which way. Light is just going to drop on this high ground, prevent the fourth for as long as he can. I think this is a reasonable move considering that everything was spotted. Oh, but he loses a science vessel. That was actually a very good snipe. Dude, I'm going to drop a dark storm here at the front. from the high ground. Oh, the Nidus is that close to the wall, eh? Okay, he could actually snipe that potentially. A good plague and some lings come up to help to defend that position. Oh, he can't reach. He can't quite reach. That was a really well thought out position uh, for the Nidus here for Jadon. Just barely out of range there. A good idea from Jada or from Light. There but, might be like yeah. one or two pockets where the Marine can barely get into range by squeezing up against the terrain, but I don't think many can shoot it. We've seen it before with uh, Zerg players putting that Nidus up against the wall and uh, hitting it from high ground. So glad to see Jada making those small uh, changes, those, those little, little tiny adjustments that make all the difference in the world. Lurkers here at the front are unburrowed. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but at the same time, a drop here into the main is actually going to deal a lot of damage. Picking off quite a few of these drones here with the fire bats uh, just above the screenshot here. Oh, wow. A lot of drones just went down there. And Jadung is limping here with just a few lings popping out and a couple of lurkers coming forward to try and help clean this up. I We're not even microing right now as... Light, we're still dealing quite a bit of damage. Ultras are starting to pop, but this is a three base ultra player. There's no drones at the natural either. What happened over here? Okay, they all got transferred. Not sure what's going on with that, but a lot of drones get transferred to the main, I guess, in preparation for this drop. Ultras are finally out. They can clean, but how efficiently can they clean this? Marines behind mineral patches. I mean, it's still going to be really annoying. Like, even if you are cleaning it up, it doesn't feel good as uh, even if you are cleaning up. The killing these tanks is huge, though. Those tanks dying for free is a pretty big deal. Um, that's a bit of a mistake. Light distracted with this constant aggression. Um, maybe there's a little bit of a window for Jadong to just start smashing him. Uh, yeah. Once he gets his fourth gas online in this top right. Oh, we're seeing some slop here from Light right now. I, I, he was playing so well, and now he's like kind of falling apart. Oh, he gets another kill. Dark Swarm should come down on this drone line. He absolutely needs it. He's going to have to consume an egg. Uh, he goes ahead and throws that down. Ultra's going to come forward. You can't really push with uh, drops anymore once Ultras are out, especially with foreign armor. Uh, everything that pops out of dropships, two drops or four drops, is going to easily be cleaved by, you know, two to four Ultras. And he's losing his sh his shuttle or his uh, his dropships and his science vessels. So, oh, wow, the, the uh, Nidus was actually killed. killed. So that's pretty big. I don't see another Nidus on the way. That could be a problem here as Light pushes up towards the top right once again. Yeah, he's uh, he, 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 he lost the Nidus and he lost the Ultra Cavern. He's only remaking the Ultra Cavern right now. There's no way of getting units to and from these bases. So if there's a mistake in positioning, like Jadon could just be in a world of hurt. But he's doing such a good job of catching all these dropships out on the map with these packs of Scourge. Like, like science vessels and dropships have been dying left and right in this game. Another science vessel coming in, getting good array on this defiler. Without the Nidus set up, if he makes a mistake of how he balances his units, and there's just, he's like, like, if he doesn't remake a defiler on the right hand side, and there's just nothing to dark swarm and there's no Nidus, he just dies. So yeah, he needs to get this Nidus up and running really soon because otherwise he's going to be well out of position against um, Light's uh, timing attacks. Jadong is doing everything he needs to do to find a way back into this game. Uh, and he, I, I would say he is fully in it now. 120 supply to 108. That's the totally gas. playable with the fourth gas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're getting kind of late at 17 minutes now, but we've got a few minutes here for gas economy to work with. Um, with this many ultras popping out and the aggression going to swing back on the light side of the, t uh, of the, the map. 
maybe we can win this game i think a fifth base uh, we'll start to get thrown down here soon by Jadon. You can probably take like double expansion, one on the left, one on the right, and just try to see what sticks. Meanwhile, right. some little counterattacks going all over the map. Light has a pretty decent supply that he's moving, but not enough to hold down both the natural in the top left and the top right. He can't uh, control both those areas at the same time, so he's going to have to rotate back and forth, which opens up opportunities for maybe uh, Jadong to come in and um to stop that he's got a lot of scourge here this is really important you don't want to allow these vessels to fly in and just start irradiating everything so uh, he picks off a vessel he gets a nice plague things are looking pretty good here for Jadong. he's doing everything he needs to do like i said um he will lose this uh defiler unfortunately not gonna get a kill back onto those uh vessels but he's managed to save some of his uh some of his ultras from these irradiates and there are openings right now that uh, pathways that to light space that Jadon could potentially take advantage of. Yeah, I'm curious if what Light's follow up is going to be is he going to stay pure SK or are we going to see like a little uh, BC switch here and try and like put some pressure on with those? I mean, this is a pretty big map, so BC's not quite as good here, but still can get some value against the style from Jadon. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, so far, Jadong's done a pretty good job, but always oh, getting this Defiler caught out. It's really unfortunate. Does manage to get the Dark Swarm down, but you know, it doesn't really matter. Like, once a Defiler, it's unfortunate. If you could get this Defiler over to one of these bases, it can be disastrous here for Light. Um, he's finally starting to come out on, onto the map and exploit these open lanes, uh, these vectors of attack onto Light. There is a couple of bunkers here and some rallied reinforcement units, but the whole army's got to turn around for Light to come and defend this because there's a lot of committed units here. I think Jadon's going to pull out, though. Uh, Light's already in, in intercepting him. Getting a lot of radiates on all these uh, uh, ultralisks. I don't think there's enough meat to Jadon's army to fight Light head-on right now, but I think also it's going to be very difficult for Light to secure a fifth, maybe. Base shut down on the right. It's going to be remade. Base on the left here for Jadon. is going to try to come up. At the same time, he's running around with these ultras looking for damage, you know. The really punishing thing that Light got the, the punish on that attack was all the uh, ultras getting irradiated as they were running away from that uh, bottom left base. This is not enough marines though. This is too many ultras. Yeah. Even with the plus three, he just doesn't have the bulk. Mistake. He's not. He's moving out onto the map before his reinforcements even like join up with the army. Like you need to have a massive clump of uh, bio to fight these um, ultralists. Like you can't just let them like surround your small pockets like this. You need to really build up a massive brick of infantry so you can just a move like one of them down at a time. I guess that answers your question, Shun. We are gonna have battle cruises on the way here soon. On this map. The uh, gases are really punishable for the 5th and 6th base. Um, yeah. You can see they're right up against this wall with high ground. So you can send the battle cruisers over here and potentially deny these gases for a long time. We're past the 20 minute mark, 21 minute mark. So natural and main are going to be completely mined out. Losing a few of these vessels, but trading back a bunch of irradiates on these ultras. I think this is actually a worthwhile trade for light. But he needs to get over here and punish this base. Um, allowing more gases up from Jadong is a death sentence. He's got to get in here and, and do something about this here pretty soon. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, the, the, the BC's answer, like, one half of the question, uh, but the other the other side of the map still needs to be dealt with. The BC's will maybe deny a little bit of mining on this uh, natural third on the left here, but getting rid of this other base that's coming online will also be a, a mounting issue if he's not able to secure his own fifth, which is what I was worried about, was that Light, even though he's done what he's done, he's not really got enough map presence to secure a fifth without it going unchecked here. So jaylon has got all these like little scouting units in the bottom right, just waiting for him to try and take a fifth, and he's waiting for those opportunities to go on the counter-offensive once he does so. So Light's just trying to get the job done with four base economy right now, but Beautiful Plague's completely softened up the, the fleet of science vessels and now getting sniped by some Scourge. Jaylon's lying mining at the natural third as well. This is like Jaylon playing really well today I have to say Sam. Yeah, he is hanging in there like nobody else can just amazing he was able to 
uh, after you know big losses in the early game bring it to a position like this against life it all comes down to a lot of these scourge plays that we've seen yeah. we just saw a great one uh you know going in there against all of those uh, plagued units able to clear out a ton of those vessels and he's even going to come in with the mutas here he is sniping nearly all of them down he is going to get that final one every single vessel goes down a light is close to clearing this but it's just not enough we're going to bring reinforcements forward and save that base and with these two extra gases online i think that light will have to tap out soon he's played a pretty good game but Jadon's definitely uh, been superior here with his yeah. Scourge play, uh, able to bring himself back from a very big deficit this game. Yeah, very shrewd full base uh, timing attempt here for like, just can't quite get the job done though, unfortunately. Jadon just on fire. Um, um, there is there is three BCs here, but Jadon's got the spore counters already. Like this is how you counter BCs, just throw down some spores, and then you know they, it just like sandbags them so much, like just just for the cost of some minerals. So Jadon's really like doing every single eye crossing every single T today, and, and I'm really impressed with his play. Usually he's a little bit shaky, a little bit sloppy, and not quite performing or impressing. But I have to say today he's done a fine job of it. Absolutely. Light being the, the more sloppy one here in this mm. uh, game, you know, throwing away a lot of units in some of these drops and uh, allowing so many of his uh, uh, drop ships to actually get picked off. There's the final battle cruiser falling. GG. Zerg taking the victory here. Gets the clapper. Well done, Jadong. Clutching it out there from a deficit. Great comebacks this weeks yeah so it's just crazy crazy comeback crazy. over and over again yeah the comeback kings this week is absolutely insane it's almost like each week like with the script writers have a different idea for like what theme the week should be like should it be like someone that just goes on an all kill spree and destroys everyone or should it be like a tempo swingy like like thing or should it be like one race just dominating do you know what i mean like it seems like there's like almost like a theme to each week like i don't know strange right yeah so the comeback week of KCM has concluded Zerg taking a lead once again we didn't get that three-way tie but Terran and Protoss right on even footing as we move into the week number six it actually uh, seems like we're gonna have a race between yep. those two races um, Terran or Protoss who is going to uh, be the last place there um, <laughs> Zerg far and away ahead it can change pretty quickly though if we get some uh, more lackluster lineups or if we get lackluster performances from these guys or uh, you know protoss really steps their game up like they did in week three and week four uh, right. things can turn around pretty quickly we still have a couple more weeks but it's looking pretty set at this point that zerg will uh maintain that lead and and continue on to uh, take that final spot uh, yeah and i think um all things considered with how like lackluster the protoss squad was we actually had a really interesting week and some very like you know like exciting games even that like backhoe um game on monty hall was very um interesting uh so even though the teams weren't optimal i still think we got you know pretty good result here and uh, i imagine that the proto squad will be looking a lot stronger in these weeks to come so i, f I really feel like we're gonna have that lock headlock race between protoss and terran if Zerg is still on the uh, upward projection here but i don't know like you know if sulky and hero stop bringing it then maybe that you know it, it would, we will have a bit of a freeway race here still i don't know how quite this last few weeks are going to play out for kcm i hope the proto squad don't lose any kind of motivation and come in with some strong squads though because uh, they should definitely be fighting right now yeah for sure the proto squads have been historically a little bit lackluster i think that's due to the fact that there's not as many bonjois or really strong uh asl contender protoss um available right now it's basically you know snow bisu mini uh stork now is kind of like that fourth and or fifth best is like the the fourth so 
uh, you know, just a handful of Protoss that can be drawn from each week. We need to grab three uh, each time. There, there's a few others that are almost at that level, but it feels like those five no. are like a cut above the rest. Yeah, no, I think you're right. And uh, it's interesting to see, though, like, Stork has been able to kick it into high gear and has been able to hang with the other guys more lately. And that's exciting to see. And mm -hmm. it, it's nice to see that the old the old is hanging out with the new. So you've got a lot more of these modern Terrans like Speed and Sharp rising up through the ranks. But you've also got these other older guys that are still hanging, too. And I think that's going to give us a much more diverse range of play across the board. So you'll see much more different approaches to the game in terms of strategizing or optimizing builds and what have you. And that just makes for a more a more exciting age, a more, more exciting Golden Age of StarCraft to look forward to each week. So I'm really stoked. Yeah, we're joking about this before the uh, cast actually started about how you know we keep calling stork the dinosaur and certain players are way older than other players but they're all very similar in age in reality stork is just 36 and like flash <laughs> is 34 and you know the the baby uh baby ty no. is only 32 years old so they're all very close in age <laughs> but they just have their reputations they have their stories and when they were starting out and when they were playing back in the day, those small yep. age differences really made a huge impact. Um, now, not so much at all. Uh, everyone's kind of on the same level, but it's great to see, you know, even at this age, uh, players are able to dominate and yeah. play so well. It really is a timeless what? game. Well, it does seem like people aren't really slowing down too much with age, at least on this game. And um, if anything, like they're growing, they're aging like fine wine. You know, the more they, they develop their experience through like decision making and playing thousands of ladder games and really nailing how the fundamentals of the game play out and what have you. Even if they aren't quite as fast as some of these newer guys, they're more than fast enough to hang and leverage their um, more, more, you know, lexicon of experience that they've got to to finally find a way of getting a finesse over these you know so-called youngsters so it doesn't seem like there's much of an age limit on these guys as we once thought there would be no it seems to be quite the opposite like you were saying uh experience is king and the decision making aspect of this game is so impactful no. uh, it's more impactful than any you know fast twitch or uh you know quick response time um knowing you know where your opponent should be at and where uh, relative to where you are and understanding the potential possibilities of what can be done and preempting those things mm -hmm. is way more important than reacting to what's what what's happening right. on the map um for sure so uh you want to say one more thing shun before we wrap up here no, no, I mean, I've really enjoyed this week and I look, I really look forward to KCM. Like, it's, it's hard not to. Like, how can you how can you not be excited to watch these games? You never know what's going to happen every week. And it, like I said, it's almost like each week's got its own theme. So you get kind of like a different episode of its different arc of stories. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about being alive is that life is just experiences and stories. And StarCraft is almost just a way of like, you know, acting as the tessellation of that and the, the, the conduit of that storytelling in just one other form. And I'm all about it. More great stories coming to this season of the KCM and all seasons in the future, guys. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to go down to the description, check out all the links, go over to KCM's channel, give him a like. We appreciate him as well. And we hope he continues to do this uh, into infinity and beyond, guys. Thank you so much. See you in the next video. Peace. Thanks, guys.